Hello and welcome to the London Something podcast with myself, DJ Ron, and thank you in advance for joining us today. Thanks to those of you who have liked, commented, shared and subscribed. We really appreciate your support, as by doing so it helps our channel grow and reach so many more people. A special shout out to our sponsor, West End DJ, who with their continued support, help us provide more of these episodes documenting the culture of jungle and drum and bass. Check out the link below and use our London Something code to get a discount for the best in DJ and sound equipment for all your needs. The London Something podcast welcomes a true legend to the jungle and drum and bass scene. From his earliest days as a b-boy, breaker and hip-hop scratch DJ, to playing at some of the biggest northern acid raves of that era. My guest has gone on to become a household name, making some of the most seminal records of our scene. Please welcome my friend Leroy, aka DJ SS. He's saying, Lee, you okay, yeah? You all right, yes, yeah? Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 it's been a while, man, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And, and you know what, S, it's, it's nice to know that you're here. And I tell you why, particularly because I've had a lot of comments from people going, yeah, man, what about some people from outside of London? Right, we yeah. know it's a London <laughs> something, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. But what about some people? And your name, I must say, I think that your name would probably be the one, one of the ones that has been called up the most. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so, bless, bless, so thanks yeah. for coming down and joining yeah. us. You know what I mean? I know you've got, you've come a long way to be here. You know, yeah. You're always trying to represent. You know. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. The thing is, um, which I'm sure you know, this, while this is about the artist's career, mm. it's more about their life and the challenges. Really, you know, it's, not, it's not so much the challenges, really, what they faced. Yeah. But we're all human. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We're yeah. all human yeah. and we find that once we start speaking about one's life stories, then the you know, other stories come out, you know, yeah. and those stories are kind of like what we're here to speak about today that that made you into who SS is today, you yeah. know what I mean? Yes, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So um, just tell me some of like your earliest memories, like as a child, you know what I mean? Like from the earliest you can remember growing up in Leicester. My earliest mem mem memory as a child is being in my mum's home and she having she had a like a record player but it was one of them old all in one big stand up things and I remember seeing these black discs and I used to just play with them. Mm. I was fascinated by them. Mm. I must have been about four or five years old. Mm. And my mum showed me how it worked. And I was just like, you could put that on and some sound could come out of it. And I was just f fascinated, blown away. So I, Every day I was just like playing, putting on a record, putting on a record, and that became my first experience in into the music thing. That's what got, really got me into mm. the music. I knew from that age I wanted to do something with this piece of plastic. Wow, that's incredible that you, you kind of like already had that yeah, foresight yeah. so young, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting because a lot of people, they speak about, Obviously, they, their first introduction to music would have been from at home yeah. because of their parents yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Did you have um, other siblings and stuff like that? Yeah, I've got two brothers mm. and two sisters. Yeah. Um, we're all very tight-knit. Mm. Um, my sister was really into the music thing, but I was more, from that early age, I kind of pushed it forward. Even going to school as a young kid, you know, trying to get into an environment that was music kind of based mm -hmm. and everything kind of seemed about music and I became back in the 80s we formed the breakdance crew because we were so into the music and it was just like we couldn't hear or do anything we wanted to do so the breaking you know the the, the camaraderie as a group that's what really set it off at first mm. do you know what I mean yeah. Yeah, it's interesting as well because, um, you know, like even from my own ex London experience, yes. it, um, you know, like they, they, we had like the body poppers yeah, and the breakers yeah, yeah, and yeah. whatever. And, yeah. um, and it's interesting how no matter where you were in the, in the UK, yeah, yeah. that these things were happening there as well. That's you know? right, that's you know? right. And that was my first experience with Goldie. That's when I first met Goldie. Oh, really? From, from breakdancing. Right, from okay. From break, the breaking kind of era. And that's like way before yeah, Jungle, yeah, yeah. Acid House, way any before, of that. Yeah, way yeah. before, way yeah. before the experience. And it was just like, it was, we used to come to London. There used to be breakdance competitions in 
O2 or I forgot what it's called. Mm. And I remember coming to London, like a little kid thinking, what am I doing here? I'm in a big city. Mm. And somebody sold me a Kango. I had, mm. you know, you know, Kangos was a thing back then. Mm. So and for I, people who yeah, don't know, Kango's, Kango's a hat. hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember <laughs> giving the guy the money. Yeah. He said, I'm going to go and get your hat. I remember giving the 20 quid and thinking, he just disappeared. And I think, oh, what did I do that for? And he turned, turned up with this red Kango. And I was just like, wow. You know what I mean? He came back from middle of nowhere. And I'm just thinking, wow. You know, I've got my Kango. I'm part of the scene. I'm official. <laughs> and I remember vaguely Goldie being around the thing, you know, the whole graffiti. Mm -hmm. And we used to go over to Nottingham, um, to the Brit Rock City, mm -hmm. which is still there now all day is break dancing against Nottingham versus Leicester and there was olders we were like the youngest there was um people called Skywalkers and Electronauts we mm. were the younger ones mm. and we used to go and support them remember them times when people used to travel there used to be a coach of us from Leicester mm -hmm. to go and support the local crews and I remember meeting so many people in the scene through break dancing do you know what I mean because mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. like it was like a kind of natural progression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was. It was a community, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, and it had its sort of um, sim a lot of similarities to to uh, I suppose jungle in its early days, yeah, where yeah. you know you had like groups of people who were like your probably best friends, who had, yeah. somebody had some decks and whatever, yeah, and yeah. that's where they yeah. kind of everybody went round their house it's or whatever. Yeah, yeah. the breaking was very similar in that way, you know what I mean? So not just the breaking, because yeah. it was body popping. For yeah. me, it was yeah. body popping, my yeah. thing at that time. Yeah. I never really got into the breaking. I, yeah. I wasn't very good at it, yeah. do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But um, <laughs> there was the popping wizards. They were actually quite well known, man, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They were quite well known, yeah. Danny Francis and these guys. Yeah. But just going back a couple of steps, you know, like you say, like you, um, and you spoke about your siblings and how close you were. What, where were you in the... In, um, I'm, the, I'm the second youngest. You're the second youngest, yeah. right, okay. I'm the second youngest mm. in, in the tribe. Mm. And I suppose I got away, I got away with everything until my youngest one came. But we were a very tight unit. All of all the family was based in Leicester. So in our community, I think as a child, it was blessed in, even in, Radical times, mm. you know, what where would you we class live. As radical times, you know, when it, it, the segregation, mm. you know, where I live now. Mm. I remember going there as a kid, and we got chased out. Break dance in the church hall, mm. and some people heard there were some black kids there. The whole estate came and chased us out, mm -mm. and we were just like, "We're only dance. We're only coming to dance. Yeah. We literally, we was, we literally had to run and leave an area mm. for just, you know, participating." In, in dance move in the middle of the church. Mm. And I, now I live literally around the corner from a place. And mm -hmm. I tell my kids, mm. oh, back in the day, you couldn't walk down these streets. Mm. Yeah. So even from then, I think our area, which was Highfield, was very um, gated. Because, mm. um, yeah, when we went out, we probably suffered a bit of more racism. But because everybody got along in the community, community it was like, Everybody was kind of protected. Mm. But I know people that from my breakdance crew that lived outside the area that struggled really bad. And I always try and emphasize this. I think that I think that's led me onto my experiences now. You know, growing up as a child, even though I did experience going out, it was it wasn't nowhere near as bad as a lot of people suffered. You know what mm -hmm, I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that gave me kind of I think that gave me a more thicker skin, like from there going into the middle of Russia and being the only black man there, I just took it normal. I didn't, mm. you know, I didn't feel threatened, um, probably because I was made probably a bit more protected as a child or didn't, I didn't really take it too much to heart, I think, you know? Mm. And I think my mum read it in as, you know, work hard, work hard, you know? And I had that spirit when everybody was out doing their thing, I was in practicing, you know what I mean? Mm. Breaking or doing something my mum used to say, get out of the house. Just, but it was all about the music for me mm -hmm, mm. as a child. Now I see how I've planted a seed because it's given me a great work ethic where continued, no matter when things are tough, fight the fight, 
so through, through my childhood, really, and them experiences of, of music. And as you said, we had a conversation with Simon Birch. Mm -hmm. He came in later after that mm. as a kid. Definitely music, definitely paved the way for me to open many doors for many other people. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. We was blessed in Leicester. Um, Leicester had a big Asian community, always. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Come massive on. Asian yeah. community. And when times are trouble, it's like brothers, 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 yeah, stick together. Mm. But when other times, they're, they're doing their thing, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, no support. Yeah. But in our area, it was definitely. In, definitely in our area, we got this community spirit yeah. for sure. Any anybody troubled anybody in our area, that was it. Was curtains. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember some girls telling us that oh, some guys, some guy was, you know, yeah. flashed them. Yeah, yeah. The whole estate came looking for this man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It was like war. Like it was so surreal. When I think about it now, mm. it was so surreal. The community because you don't get it now. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you yeah. do not see that kind of spirit in our. But as a kid, we was definitely blessed from where we come from. And I explained to my kids the same purpose. Yeah, you can't underestimate the power of community. Yeah, and you know, because through through the place where I grew up called Highfields, I still have friends now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Long, yeah, long yeah. friends because we went through the grime and the battles and we've fallen out and. But it was all about a positive spirit in in, in our neighbourhood, mm. to be fair, Leicester. We are right in the heartbeat of the country, so things were a lot tougher, do you know what I mean? In general, cost of living, you know, everything was tough. My mum had to work three jobs. And I remember one day, like from, from I never used to see my dad. Mm. Even my dad lived with me. Yeah. It's not like he was a stay home dad, lived at the house. Yeah, yeah. He just worked all the time. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and we'd yeah. see him probably once a week if we were lucky. Right, okay. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. then he was gone. I remember the kid was like, yeah, and he used to put all these pennies on the table. There you go. We used to, oh, we're rich. You yeah. know what I mean? For sweet money. And he was just like, but it's such a loving person. Yeah. He was just so kind, but he just worked yeah, all, all the time. The time. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And then he was just gone. Mm. I remember mum saying, oh, he's not here no more. Mm. And that was traumatic for us. For me, especially. And because they bro they broke up, I take it. Yeah, 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 they broke broke up. But it wasn't a bad thing. We weren't like, there were never no arguments. Yeah. I like, never really heard my mum and dad argue, anything like that. It was just that he was just out there. And I remember he was God. And I remember that was my first experience of thinking, wow, you know, like heartbreak, you know, missing yeah. something, you know, that yeah, kind yeah. of thing. You think, wow, is everything going to be okay? How how old are you then? I must have been about eight, eight seven, right. eight probably. Mm. And my mum said, "Yeah, this is his dress. Go and see him." And it was literally like ten minute walk up the road. Yeah, we used to go and see him, so it was all, it was all gravy really. Yeah, I remember mum having three jobs, and then one day she's like, "We're moving." She took us out, the so called hood. Yeah, yeah. It was it a hood to us? It was, you know, horrible. it weren't like yeah, yeah. horrible or. Like, Crime ridden, it was just where we grew up. And yeah. she, she bought a house. I remember her buying a house, and we're thinking, wow, we've made it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, yo, look at this big house. Like it was a small. And you just think the things that our parents had to go through yeah, yeah. to plant a seed for us to even do what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and I always take that as a blessing. And that's put that in my spirit from me as a parent, as a kid, you know what I'm saying? Because most things, in most things, I know in this generation now, you know, just, just like for instance, my, my kid, I'm getting a bit off track now, my kid no, works, it, in, works in a school, for bad behaviour school, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. He's, 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 he got, he, he got um, kind of drawn into that. Yeah. And he, he just tells me about his experience and stuff like that. And he just says, Nine times out of ten, the problem's always with the home. Right, okay. Do you understand what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, the problem yeah. is always with the home and the kid and, you know, because a lot of kids with now, in our, in, in our generation, ADHD, what's that? Yeah. Just go out and play football and run about and yeah, climb yeah. trees and da 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 and burn off your energy. Yeah. Now, any little tig now, they're diagnosed and they're giving them medication and before they know it, 
you put you, you you're putting a tag on the ch on the child's back. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because people are in classes, and you imagine you're a kid in a class, and you want to learn, but you 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 can't fathom how to do it as quick as thinking. You don't want to be that dumb kid. Yeah, that's so right. you act out. I'm not doing it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And before you know it, he's in that cycle. Yeah, it's too far, and then the cycle begins. That's a bit going off track. But as a child, as a child, we was not given that option. No, there, no, there wasn't. There's a lot of um, diagnoses of various types yeah, now yeah. in children and in adults. Yeah, yeah. That makes you wonder how is this happening when so many years ago, not so long yeah, ago, yeah. it wasn't there. No. And um, and I I don't really know enough about it to comment to be able to suggest the good, the bad, and the ugly between it all. Mm. Um, but I do recognise something that you've said where when your, your son has said that a lot of things happen with the pet, with yeah. starting from the parents at home. Yeah. And even with that, I know that there are those who have come from really good parents, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And somehow they get themselves caught up yeah. in a different crowd and yeah. stuff like yeah, that. that's right. And um, I mean, as we're speaking in the sort of like school environment, what was that like for you? Um, what was school like for My you? School, school was great for me. I was mm. a joker. Yeah, yeah. I was just enough, just enough, just enough. I didn't take school seriously enough mm. because I never enjoyed, I enjoyed art, mm. I enjoyed music. It's funny I that, isn't it? Everybody I mean, likes music yeah, and yeah, art. Yeah, yeah. And I loved else. it. I loved art and music and the creative <laughs> side. I used yeah. to be in a, school plays and stuff like that. Mm. The maths was just basics, English. Yeah, I just, it didn't, it was just like, okay, yeah, mm. basics. And they're talking about history. Well, yeah. this history has nothing to do with me. I yeah. don't know about no Henry VIII and, mm. you know, this and that. Yeah, this and that. Uh, it wasn't talking about our history. Mm. You know what I mean? We weren't talk black history or mm. different history in the world or different cultures. It was all thingy. Yeah. But I remember as a kid, way back, we also used to do the school prayer. Mm. And I never, I never got it then, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, sit down, you had the milk and biscuit, do the school prayer, the queen, da 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 mm. And everyone did it. And it mm. was like, okay, we did it. We kind of celebrated the moment, let's move on. Mm. Now they've took all that out of schools, everything's just gone wild. So, so, they, don't, so they don't have that in school? No, no, they right, have no, okay. they, no, no, they don't have none of that in school. Once, mm. you, once you've took, and I'm, I'll go on to that topic a bit later because it's a big part of my story now. Yeah. But seeing the picture from then till now, because it, um, it's like a story, a story's been told. It's been pre-written mm -hmm. and you're going through it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so as a kid... Well, I'm not exactly sure what you mean, well, me, but you're going to explain yeah, it gonna to explain me. Yeah, I'm going to explain it to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so as a kid, I went through an experience where it was just blessed after blessing and blessing, blessing and blessing, in a sense where there was never really no problems. Mm -hmm, it wasn't mm -hmm. troubled. Family, even though mum and dad broke up, we still got on. Mm -hmm. Family's tight, you know, there was never, never major issues. We all gathered together. Mm -hmm. And I think the strong family unit worked, made that work. You know what I mean? My mum taught me some really great ethics. Mm -hmm. and my sister was the first one to leave the house. And I thought that was, wow, why is she leaving? You know what I mean? Everything's blessed there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But she seen things differently. And it was like, well, one minute she was living in Birmingham. And we'd come back and it was like, wow, I used to go and see her. And I think, oh, because it was so tight. We were so tight as a family, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? And I looked at all them experiences. And I think, okay. Then my mum said to me, yeah, going through, as, going through school, my school journey was pretty, pretty smooth because we was a, our school was the first school to probably get the first major funding. You know, one of them new looking schools yeah, way yeah. back in the eighties, the, mm -hmm. the brick, the rock, orange bricks, you know what I mean? <laughs> Rebuilt from some old dead school. And they said, yeah, you're moving to the new college. It was a college, the first yeah, one yeah. of the colleges, but we had tennis courts, we had football, all of the football mm. pitches. Our sports hall was like, mate, the sports hall was so massive. It was like people, People were jealous when they used to come and see our school. Mm, yeah, yeah. It was just blessed. Because mm. was we were just so caught up in our own spirit, you know what I mean, mm. around there. And I look at what changed for me as a child. I could have been an artist because mm -hmm. I was really good at art. I didn't know how. I was, yeah. I was just good at it. 
I remember the teacher saying to me, oh, yeah. And she didn't tell me, yeah. She said, yeah, you're pretty good. And then she said, I've got AA star or whatever it was, but you know, back then. She said, you should do A levels. I went, yeah, yeah. And you boosted, yeah. I'm mm. on a special crew. Mm. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It said, um, starts from six to seven. I said, what, at night? I said, yeah. I said, nah, I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not coming back to school after school, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I, that's one thing I regretted. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, it was all about um, positive. I was a local school DJ. I was DJing. Well, the break, let me go back. We had a break dance crew, mm. which we traveled around the country. So this is in, this is in secondary school though. Secondary right. school, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when you came out from primary school, yeah, yeah. it was just like in regular yeah. primary school it's experience. Yeah, yeah, regular primary it's, school, yeah. no problem. It's as you go into secondary school that you yeah. start to kind of like yeah. find yourself. Uh, yeah, I started to connect with people and um, just, I started, we started break dancing. We could break dance on the front, we used to have, like a little, because it was a modern school, they made it kind of okay for us to do that. So we used to practice at, you know, at dinner time and stuff, break dancing, and then people used to come up to our area because the school was so advanced. People were like, wow, Moat Community College, look what they got. Um, and then my experience from then, it, is we were break dancing, we formed break dance teams and entering competitions, and we had a manager. I was thinking, manager, I'm like, at that time, I'm 12 years old, man, mm. 13. Mm. Manager, and this manager just took us around the working man clubs. Mm. I remember going to Wales, three, three hours, going to Wales, like, in some hills, like. <laughs> and then we'd come out breakdancing, and you could see people's face. Mm, what are these? You know what I mean? Because yeah. they'd never really seen it. But you, we was touring around. We must have been quite a well-known uh, outfit then to be touring. We was touring, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it was like working man clubs. Yeah, you but still, I mean? even yeah. for them to go yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. it just turn up there yeah, randomly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's who, this guy knew people, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The guy knew people. And then our first thing, major thing, we got on Pebble Mill 1, which was I equivalent. Yeah, yeah. Pebble Mill 1, yeah, <laughs> in the Midlands. Yeah, I remember getting on there. We've gone, for, I'm just really trying to look for the video for 20 mm. years, can't find can't it. Can't find it. The, 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 the school shut the school off for the, 20, the 10 minutes we were on. Yeah. They watched it on a screen that was, <laughs> the big, you know, I am type of moment. Mm. And from there, we found out a lot of things about a manager. It was never, never about money or not, it was just about the experience. Yes. And then when it came, another person got involved. He, he said, where's all the money? We're like, what money? Do you know what I mean? Because we're just going there dancing, yeah, and, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. He said, yeah. well, you got paid to do that, got paid to do that. And that's when we realized, oh, right. And that's probably my first experience of Exploitation. Exploitation. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. we're just like. It was, and that is dark. Yeah. You know I mean? and, is, and, and, we was, and we were given the chance to do some freak we loved. Mm. So it was never about the money. Mm. And then that, my first thing, and I think to myself, wow, all them working man's club that we did, this man was getting paid for it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, course, and then yeah. when he's trying to thingy, the man was, we got pocket change at the end because we got paid, I think we got paid at the end of the term or something. Yeah. And that's when we realized, rah, yo, we need to just do our own thing and yeah. that was my first experience of being exploited i didn't take it negatively i thought well, okay well that's how people are going to treat people mm -hmm. i got to do my own thing it, the breakdance fight started dying but we were so into it mm. the only way to continue it was to play the music that we came djs and i got my school friend to design the formation logo because mm -hmm. formation was a dance crew right, that was okay. originated that's where, in the first from, yeah, right. that's where yeah, it yeah. first came from formation five and mm. i remember my, my mate in school drew the logo i've got the mock-up of the logo mm -hmm. and he gave me my name type of thing i used to have a flat top square high yeah, top yeah. kid don't play you know what i mean <laughs> so scratching stein yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. scratching so that's where ss comes from right okay you know right. what i mean scratching stein. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 so that was the first start and so, then... so so really you you kept the essence of what was your hip-hop yeah background 100 all the hip-hop but yeah. you're sort of like covertly hidden yeah do you know what I mean? But right in front of you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Scratching that, Stein. Didn't yeah. know that. Didn't yeah. know that. And we learnt from the break dancing, as we became DJs, we started to be a bit more savvy. Uh -huh. You know, we took our own self-control. Uh -huh. And then um, my first big break, we used to DJ in the local school Christmas parties. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? F 14, 15, playing at school. 
and then our first big break, we met, a, I don't know who to introduce as a nightclub owner. He had a little tiny spot, Sundays, said, oh yeah, he'll give you Sundays. One, my mate, partner, Idris, mm. he was a bit older, he was one year older than me. I was only 16. Mm. We had a residency in a nightclub. I was right. 16 years old, mm. every Sunday. And, I believe, and I'm thinking to myself, when I look back then, when I mean it was rammed, mm. Every Sunday, and it was what sort of music were you playing? We're playing like hip hop, hip -hop electro, rare go, yeah, yeah, rare groove, hip hop, bit of house, bit of everything, anything okay. to do with, yeah, the, yeah. with the thing, because we knew what the people wanted, mm. and they couldn't hear it nowhere else. Yeah, yeah. So they came to this thing, and we was like, wow, you know what I mean? And that made us, that got us a bit of a name, mm. and then we started playing a bit out of time, and I met Kenny Khan, Asteria, mm, mm, mm -hmm. he used to do road menders in the eighties, right? Yeah, yeah, hip hop. Events, you know what I mean? Mm. He used to bring big mans there. He mm. was a man. Mm. So I, I have a long relationship with Kenny Khan. And then we traveled and locally, we've done our thing. And then my friend, my partner at the time, I became, because I was training as a bricklayer. That's mm -hmm. when I was just 16, 17, I started doing a print, not apprenticeship. I, there was like a work thing, you know. And then when you leave school, like a YTS yeah, program. YTS kind of program. Yeah, YTS kind of program. Yeah, YTS program. I was getting paid £28, a, was it £28 a month? Something oh, like that. Oh, I think it was a week. Was it a yeah, week? Yeah, yeah, yeah £20 yeah, yeah. a week. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Like, And I got apprenticeship mm -hmm. being a bricklayer. And then I got laid off, done the apprenticeship, qualified, the firm I was working for. And then one Christmas they laid me off, like, oh. I said, well, I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to do with myself? I've just given them three years of my life type of mm. thing. And that was it. I, that was that. I said, nah. I'm never, have, I'm never feeling that kind of rejection, putting all that work and feeling that kind of, kind of rejection. I said, I'm going to do the music thing. Not yeah. as a job, mm -hmm. just, just to kind of like experience that. Because I was still working and thinking it wasn't about the money. And my partner, Idris, used to import records in. I said, yeah. And I used to pay him off. He used to like get me a stack of whatever I need, and I just pay him off. Yeah. He helped my career 100 percent And that was my our close relationship. And then he set up a record shop, a small record shop. And I was the main DJ, DJing around the place. And then we started doing events. We brought over a first big show, we brought over Ultra Magnetic MCs. Mm. Yeah. Big hip hop guys yeah, back right. in yeah, the day, yeah. 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 Didn't know what we was doing. We mm. told what we doing. We were getting Leicester. We were bringing these man. <laughs> I remember bringing them and thinking, wow, yo, ultra magnetic MCs. And the show was wicked. We lost mm. money. Yeah. Because we didn't know what we was doing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? We were just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? We put on an event and think, yeah, you know. And that was our first experience as promoting something big. Do you know what I'm saying? And that hit us because we did lose good money. But the experience of bringing over an American artist changed everything for yeah. us. And we started doing little events after that, you know, little small events in, locally in Leicester. And then the rave scene, this was with hip hop. It was mainly hip hop, R&B, rare grooves, stuff like reggae, that kind of vibe, house. And then I remember my, um, my partner saying, you got to come, you got to come somewhere. I said, why? He said, yeah, you got to come. He took me to a rave, Amnesia House. Yeah. Yeah. Because we were doing our own house kind of thing, but it was more on a, on a smaller kind of scale type of thing. Mm -hmm. He took me to Amnesia House, and that changed the game for me. Yeah. Because I remember, because that was a hooliganism to his in time. Yeah. You know, everyone were fighting each other. So I went in a rave, and you see hooligans from Leicester, Coventry, Nottingham, that were f trying to kill each other in the day, yeah, but yeah. hugging each other at night. Yeah, yeah. In yeah, a rave. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was just bewildered, like, mm. what is going on here? I mm -hmm. couldn't fathom it, you know what I mean? Because I've never done the drugs thing. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. I said, I'm going to be part of this. Yeah. The love that it was shown, you know what I'm saying? The experience of love that was shown, this music has done this. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. So from that, we just started doing our own raves in Leicester. Yeah. And I changed, I changed everything that I was doing because everything was quite hip hop -y based, but it was just getting a bit too political. Mm -hmm. The love of it, you know, fight the power and all that, you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, okay, yeah, it's cool, but where, how are we going to progress? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When I don't, I don't think politics 
should be involved in music, even down to this day. Yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah. The music is a soother of the soul. Yeah. It's our expression. It allows us to freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whether it's for that hour or that 10 minutes or that whatever, we're in control of that. Yeah. It's an interesting point, actually, because there are those who, who have a POV that people should invite. Um, I don't want to use the word politics, but certainly use their influence, you know what I mean, to impart on, on situations or whatever because of the level of notoriety that they have. Mm. Um, but that is definitely going down another can of worms, you know mm. what I mean? But in that time of the acid rave scene, in the early days of the acid rave scene, the music and what sounds like now, I mean, it's the amount of people that have sat in that chair and said to me how, you know, the music saved them, mm the rave scene and everybody was loving each other and the football hooligans, um, you know, like, um, you know, obviously you yourself, you never got into drugs and stuff like that, but how ecstasy was uh, in, uh, in, uh, an integral part in all of that. Mm. It was a moment in the history of this country that I think impacted, like, not just this country, but the sort of, like, rest of the world, yeah. just from that sort of, like, rave scene, you know? Well, well, no, they, they talk about the 60s, yeah, but you, it's the 90s, which was a game-changer. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because the reason why raves were created, because they wouldn't allow us to do, play our music in where we wanted, the pirate station, the raves, it's all a combination of the same thing. People want to hear the music, what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And it was just like control, control, control. Going from the early rave scene, they'll tell you, oh, it's in this, here's, a, here's the address. Mm -hmm. but you know, no mobile phones. I turn right here, you know, you're driving down country lanes, like, yeah, left here, uh, and you turn up and there's 3,000 people in the field or mm -hmm. whatnot. Or what. And it was just an amazing experience. Nothing in history has ever done that. Do you know what I mean? No, that's right. Nothing you, in history has ever done it, and there will never, never be that again. Yeah, there will never yeah, be yeah. that kind of free will. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that yeah. free will for people. And it was all done for a good cause. It weren't people trying to, you know, form some kind of army or try, you know, fight back. This mm. was just people wanted to express to themselves. Dance and, they just whatever, wanted to dance. Because yeah. mm. that is the food of love. Music has always been, you know, um, the food of love. But, um, Coming back to the early 90s, my experiences from that thing in Amnesia House, it was Fabian Groove Ride and Mickey Finn, yeah? Because we were doing our thing anyway, and it was then, it was that rave, and then some of my mates used to go football, said, oh, come come to a rave in Skegness, I forgot what it's called. And I was like, after hearing that, that, that Amnesia House thing, I thought, yeah, why not? It was a weekend, I was like, whoa. Weekend? I don't know about that, you know what I mean? Mm. I'm like, I don't know if I can stay there two days, little chalet thing. Mm. But I went there and I heard Mr. Kirk's Nightmare for the first time. Mm. And I was just like, because, you know, it was like break, breaks and rave. I was like, wow, what is this? I was like, that game changed. But I, in fact, I missed the important thing yeah. before that, because it's very, very intriguing. Because when we was performing in the hip hop thing, I became part of a band called Sequi. They were a massive P Funk band. Mm -hmm. 18 piece P Funk. What did you bands. do? What did you do? Scratch. All oh, right. You okay. were the Scratch okay. DJs yeah, yeah, to yeah. me and my partner. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. back in there. And they was like, they were touring all over the place, all over the UK. And they should have been massive because they was. I used to come to London, play at Brixton Fridge. All right, okay. Yeah? Limelight. Mm. Yeah, I've been to all those clubs in the mm -hmm. 80s and this part of this band. Mm -hmm. You know, reggae, American air bases and. You know what I mean? That was my experience just before the kind of rave thing, yeah. playing in this band. And the guy, Stan Samuels, um, we used to rehearse you religiously. You come, go and make it perfect. Go there. And it was like, boom, all these people in this nickel cellar. You know, this was 18 pieces, but we couldn't get everybody in, but we got majority of them. And we just used to come there and do a little camera. <laughs> on one or two tunes, you know what I mean, in the hour. But we got to travel. I remember traveling around the country, was going the way to London. We're in the back of a transit. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how I do it because I'm claustrophobic. I yeah, don't know yeah, yeah. how I did it. That's probably because everyone was with us and we were just joking all that. Mm. We broke down on the M1. 
Yeah, oh, no. and the back of this transit, I've got the pictures of it now. Like they open the, the breakdown man. Is that, what's up? No, no. He opened the door and whoa, whoa! Like I seen all these blacks <laughs> in the back of the van. It was hilarious. <laughs> and then I remember a pivotal gig was Brixton Fridge. That was an amazing show. It was packed out. I remember loading back, and I used to take my own turntables, saved up all my change for the twelve hundred. You know, oh, no. like. Went back in, boom, come out, the turntable's gone. No way. Yeah, Brixton Fridge, I was like, I'm Hold on, hold on, hold on, where were they? Brixton Fridge, because we're loading, because we're loading all the stuff. It's 18 piece band, keyboards, yeah. guitars. Yeah, yeah. Was loading the van. So, like, you know what I mean? And one man, she's supposed to stay with them, put the decks there, boom, my decks got stolen in something else. At, the, of them. at the van. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think no, there was on the side, man. about to go in the van. Yeah, that's Bro, what I mean, yeah. When I mean, I saved every little penny to get these, I tell you I bought the desk from, I bought them from Rampage. That's oh, how I really? met Rampage. Right, yeah, I went yeah. up to the thing, he said they were selling, yeah, 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 I met, that's how I met Rampage. Right, I right. bought their, their turn, my turn, first turn, I tell off them. And I was just like, I'm done with this. You know what I mean? Oh, and we just, no, sorry, bro. That, that experience, I'm, I'm done with London. I went, no, no, heartbroken. In but the van, I have to drive all the way, way back home with, with no your decks. deck. I was just like, that yo, twelve hundred, you know. I know, I know, Mate, bro. I was I like, I, was, I was so wounded. And then I came back, and then still part of the band. And then I went to rehearsal one time. Stan, the main guy, I said, "Come, come and check me in my plat." Went, thing it, pressed the button. I'm here in the band. I'm like, "Where's everybody?" Mm. No, it's in the computer. What? Cubase, I was just like, yo, I've got to get that. Mm, yeah, because mm. that was the first experience of computer music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, show me what I need to just need to get a computer and get this program. Within six months, I had my own little setup in my bedroom. Mm. And I was just. And this, what year was this then? This was 91. 91, This right, was okay, 91, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I had a box room, it was like, I could get a bunk bed in. Yeah. I could just about walk. Yeah. I could, I could walk and then I had my like a, some wood shelf with the decks and a little keyboard and monitor. Mm. So literally it was like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, there was yeah. no moving space. I remember having early formation days, artists used to come there, tango. Yeah, yeah. Tango, you know what I mean? We used to tango. sit on the bunk bed and make tunes, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, in the mum's bedroom, it was so real. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm, I was mm. like, how did I do that? But yeah, everyone yeah. was, you know. We did what we had to do. We did what we had we to do. We did what we had to do. We didn't know any different. Did, and it was like, this, this person from this place, that person from that place, Mega Drive, who I'm friends with Adam now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We're good friends now, partners and some stuff. And was them experiences. Because the rave scene brought people together. Yeah, of course it you did. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it was a mel melting pot of people. And if you was into it, yeah, where are you from? Where are you from? Go mm. Skegness. You know, that whole ethos of music was just amazing. Unless she was there to kind of witness that kind of thing, I don't think it can be recreated again. Do you know what I'm saying? No, no, no. I mean, the, the thing is, it's because it was built off of inaccessibility. Yes, yeah. yeah. It was built off of inaccessibility. Yeah. So, yeah. so there was no internet, yeah. there was no mobile phones, yeah. there was no room in the bedroom, yeah, yeah. there was only the computer could only have yeah, so much right. data, yeah, that's right. the sampler could only do that. <laughs> <But> three <seconds. laughs> I mean, it was like, everything was based off of inaccessibility. Yeah. And, and it <laughs> built into that. Yeah. Now, I could probably build a better tune on my, my phone, phone. That's right, yeah. Than I could yeah. than in my room 100%. at that time. Yeah. So, so. 100%. Mm. Before that, I met Simon. Mm. Them times, me and Simon linked up. We was working in one club, he was working in another club, but he was in a better club than it. So we're thinking, oh. When you say working, this? what was he doing? DJing? DJing. He, he was, was DJing, DJing. Right. We used yeah, to yeah. scraps in other clubs. Yeah, what was his name again? DJ name? Yeah, Dynamo. 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 Dynamo, yeah, yeah, yeah. DJ yeah. Dynamo, yeah and, yeah. and he was a bit confident to say Leaf in himself. We think, who's this dude? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, because he used to play at the local bar, do you know what I mean? And we're thinking, yeah, he's coming on the rating. He's a bit indie, and then he was on this thing. And we're thinking, rah. And then what, what was the battle was? HMV Records, yeah, because there was only one promo. So we used to get there. He was always there first, <laughs> and you just ah, laughed it. I got it, and we was like, like it was a love hate thing, yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. But and it was just like, and with such a battle, mm. but we came to a common ground. It was the music. He said, "Look, I want an idea. Mm. I want to set up a rave. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do my own thing." And I was like, "Really? I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, book me. I'll help you and do that." And he came. With this idea, I've got the flies done. Here's the first one. He, he dropped 
flyers in pe- wage packets. I said, what's that, mate? Mm. Open up the wage packet, it was a flyer. Mm. I was like, wow. That's quite so clever. He, very clever, <laughs> yeah, yeah, mate. Very clever. Folded them up himself, yeah, dropped yeah. them in the shop. And everyone's like, wages, wages, wages. And that's how he started his brand. Right. He, put, he, he, he was the first one to put, put a concept to it. Yeah, Because yeah, we do yeah. little rave things, like little flyers and da-da-da, promote it, whatever. This man put a concept mm. idea. He got the best, one of the best venues in Leicester on a Thursday. And I'm thinking, wow, how's he going to pull this off? Mm. And because he, he knew how to network, well, he was bringing people from different angles. He's going to places that we couldn't reach. Yeah. And he did the thing. And one of his first raves, Ragga Twins. He bought Ragga Twins. Hey, Ragga yeah. Twins, the bar. <laughs> and it was like, it, the, the rave finished at two o'clock, mm. 20 past for two, Ragga Twins still weren't there. Right. And I was just like, I remember oh, no coming way, outside. Really? Yeah, I remember <laughs> coming outside. That man are just pulling up at quarter past quarter to two. And the dance is done. And the dance, he said, Bob, the dance is done. He said, yeah, yeah. Then went on. They went on and they extended it for 10 minutes, yeah, yo. Yeah. I remember and I was laughing my head off. <laughs> I was like, bro, these man, typical black man moves, just turn up. The rain was packed, you know what I mean? And everybody had left yeah. by that time. No, he was still thinking, because yeah, he was yeah. like, yeah, they're coming, they're coming, because there wasn't some notified. Yeah, yeah. That. And he was like, yeah, he pulled it off and he started doing Enjoy, but Carl Cox, you know. Mm. And we was doing our things still. We was doing our things before him, mm. but we was more underground. And then our first big break, we did it all day in um, a place called Grand Bills. It was a skating rink. Mm. I remember seeing Groove, yeah. Oh, I want you to, play. I've got a rave. Oh, I can't, I'm busy. I was like, oh no, because there was only a handful of DJs mm. there. You know what I'm saying? It was like, yo. And he went, oh, this is daytime. Went, yeah, 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 daytime. Oh yeah, I can do it anytime. Boom, boom, boom. Got Cole Cox, got Fabian Groove, I got Sasha. Mm. Put on a first rave, yeah, first big rave in Grand Bios. Probably you get about 1,500 people in this building and never done a rave before mm. in there. It was unheard of. I remember doing it, we had to bring in sound, bring out everything. And because it was so unique, we packed out the place. Mm. It's memorable, do you know what I'm saying? That yeah, was yeah. probably one of the first big kind of ravey things. And because you couldn't get the venue as a rave, and people were like, what? And I remember seeing my hip hop man from school. Oh, what are you doing with the devil music? That's what he said. Oh, you sold out. You know what I mean? Hip hop man, you sold out. I remember going out of the queue, same brother's like, yeah, S, S. I said, what? I thought you don't like the devil music. Yeah. See you later. I tried to get in and get me in the team. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Because I got, you know, this, like, yeah, yo, yeah. we left it. And it was just that, that experience. And I'm thinking, my thing was all about unity. I wasn't mm. bothered about politics. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then we done that event and that kind of launched just the bigger things. And then a first major break. And then we was doing the little label things. And I, I got Mickey to come down and do a remix. And the same person who taught me the game, Stan, had his, we rented his flat as a studio. Yeah. And I got Mickey to come down. And I always respect Mickey. Mickey came down and done a remix. I remember as Mickey sleeping on the floor with a, with a sleeping bag. Yeah, yeah. I remember like that. I'm thinking, yo, this is big Mickey Finn, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Come down to do the remix, blah, 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 in this little dingy little flat. And I'm thinking, wow. And that's how we started making connections. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Well, this thing's working, maneuvering, mm. you know, linking little things. Mm. And then a first serious break. After that Nemesis, after that Nemesis party when we were doing Grand Bills, some guy kind of came into the picture, a businessman, seeing the rave. Yeah, okay, there's money to be made in this thing. Mm. We're just thinking, oh, we're just making a little change. We're not looking at it like that. We're just thinking, we're going to put on a rave. This man's coming with business. Yeah. Yeah? He's got into the corporate side of it. Mm. Corporate guys, oh, if I'm not involved, you can't get a venue. Right. So we've brought him in as a partner. Yeah? Right, yeah, yeah. So we've done a few things, events, and he's the link man, so we don't have to worry about it. So we're like, yeah, okay, cool. And then it's just got a bit one side is like taking to crawl and and then we had one big break he got us Donington Park yeah. first ever rave that was at Donington Park really and that was you guys yes right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 93 and he got the venue only because somebody pulled out we had four weeks to promote it yeah I said you're mad he said, well, how are we going to do a big rave at Don- it's not a cob yeah, you've got yeah. to bring your, you've got to bring everything in there we walked in the venue it's just like 
bro, well, it's three not and even a half hours of business. Is it really? No, yeah, yeah. We had to bring everything in, and we oh. just like, yo, don't worry. Da, 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 da. Man, I remember I was pro promoting a barroom furnace on a Tuesday night, mm. coming out a tree. Like any rave in the country, up from all up, up north, we was there, but killed ourselves, and we got three and a half thousand people. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was the first experience, mm. and from that, we made enough money to set up the main business, which is Five HQ. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's we thought your, your, your yeah, yeah, we, we built the offices above their formation office and a record store, and that's what put us ahead of the game because mm. we could we produce the music. And what year was this now? This that is... was ninety. That was ninety three. Ninety three. Yeah, 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 that was ninety three. Yeah, yeah mm. when we bought, when we done that show. Yeah. And after that, six months later, it took us about six months to get the shop because the shop was just like it was a um, it was right in the town centre, but you had to go down an alley. And then you turn right and it's like, man, we're just repairing equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a, like a warehouse thing. Mm. And we thought, oh, oh, we'll buy it from you. Oh, yeah. Well, we're just thinking, yeah, put something here. Da, 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 da. And we just, we were so creative by doing the raves because we've done loads of raves, you know, setting up. Yeah, yeah. And putting up banners and da, 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 da. We thought we'd do the same thing. Yeah. And we used to come London. We used to come London to, um, what's that place where they sell the clothes? All the Asians. We used to come to London, I'm thinking, brick all the clothes. Eh? But, what do you mean? Oh, oh what's that place? Lane. Not Petticoat Lane. Um, Asians. Uh, we used to come to a part of London and we used to buy the wholesalers there, mm. bring this to the shop. Mm. So we had everything, because we were thinking outside the box, we are thinking rave. What can we get? Tape packs, da 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 and We set up that shop and it was the hub. Yeah. Anybody want to know anything about thingy? Mm. Raves, they came. Flyers, music, mm. records. So we were the producers, we were the DJs, we were the record label and with a retailer. Mm. So we seen it from when we left the studio until it was serving so, people's hands. So, yeah, so that's yeah. how we were successful, because we could gauge, oh, people want that style. So we've just created, studio, yeah, created yeah. and that was a wicked link. And yeah, then yeah. from then, we just made bare connections. Yeah. You know what I mean? The operation, yeah. we, we, it, we worked it like a business, mm. but before, I need to go before that. I'm you know what's really that. interesting about that, when you're saying that, and you're saying that that was, not, well, the rave was 93. Yeah. But you were, uh, you were, uh, so it would have been six months after, whether yeah. it was at the end or, yeah. or the middle of 93, you were still kind of like d having that shot in shop yeah. in early 94. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. That vision even yeah. early yeah. 94. Yeah. And it's quite interesting because when you consider that and you consider what was going on in London mm. in 1994, it sounds like that was still. A bit, of, you were advanced. Yeah, yeah, we were definitely. 100%. You were advanced, bro. What, what, one hundred percent? Because there were labels starting and yeah. and, and and things like Moving that. But shadow, buggy times. yeah, there were labels. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but I don't think to the extent that they were they were in that position. No. You know what I mean? Buying their own building. Yeah. And because you got to remember the reason why we got away because everything was cheap, rent and stuff was cheap. Yeah, yeah. There we you got go. a little broken down building that no one wanted. They yeah, couldn't. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't. There was no shop front. Yeah, yeah? yeah. It was I had to go down the alleyway. Mm. But because it was rave, people it prepared to do anything. Yeah, it yeah. falled into the culture. Yeah, yeah. Before this happened, yeah. Simon put on one of the big raves with Rain Dance. Mm -hmm. He brought Rain Dance to Leicester. This is before I'd done any dub plates or anything. Mm. I was performing that show and I one of my first records, well, not one of my thingy records, I wanted to play at that show, made it that day. And the man said, yeah, Music House, London. I'm like, what, what's that? Me and my partner got on the train, come off down what's Holloway Road, walked up, took a right, got in this little place. I thought, wow, bam, cut this tune and played it at the rave that same night. Yeah. And you know, after I finished playing it, I said, I made this tune today. And mm. I'm playing it on, vi on some kind of vinyl. And that blew me away. Yeah. That was kind of like the first, you know, record. You know what I mean? That was the first thing you're like, whoa. So we think, yeah, this tune works. Yeah. Psycho EP, one of the yeah, tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This works. So we thought, how do we press this? And we came to London, met a guy called Ahmed at Pressing Plant. He showed us how it works. He says, oh yeah, we'll press like 250 copies. Mm. So we did that and we done SOR. Drop it to all the shops. Course, yeah, yeah. yeah, drop it, drop all the tunes out of all the shops. I they sold out. SOR for ages. You I get me? I ain't even heard that term for years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. SOR, you yeah, know. SOR, so, oh, bro. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, my biggest experience in, we didn't even have a label, it was just a record. Yeah, it's the first thing we tried to get rid of it. So that one went well, so we repressed it. A man said, oh, yeah, this tune can be big. 
I can get, get, get rid of you. For, I can get rid of it for you. 500 copies. I said, all right, hey, boom, boom. 500. Give the man 500. Come the market. Mm. Yeah, come down, meet them. Da, 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 da. Come back later, SOR. Blah, blah, blah. Came back. What are you talking about? I give you money. Because we're country. He's looking at his country, you know really? what I mean? And this is somebody well known in the scene now. Re still now? Yes. Yeah, somebody in this game now. Really? That was there back in the day. You're going to have to tell and me I when I come I, I, And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I never, I didn't speak to that person mm. for probably 20 years after that. Yeah, yeah. But it was the best thing that happened to me. Right. Because yeah. it made me think, right, you, you've just set a fire up me now. Yeah, You're yeah. going to do that to me and take that little change? Yeah. Watch what's going to happen. I thought, you. And that's when I was like, Yo, the outsider. These men are classing us as country bumpkin. Watch what we do. Yeah, that yeah. experience happened to me. It just set me on fire then. Because I'm yeah. thinking, hold on a minute. That money we could have made, we could have done A, B, and C. So I was like, yo, okay, bomb. It's a lesson learned. Because we should have never done it to individual. Because mm. we'd done it to record shops. Yeah, yeah, SOS, yeah. SOS, you know what I mean? With an individual, you don't know where it's yes, coming from. When we come up, remind me when we come yeah, out of here yeah. to tell me who that well, was. Yeah, 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 and that yeah, experience... Yeah set me off yeah. where I'm thinking I'm not messing about now when we did it and then we got a deal you know what I mean and that's how the label started yeah. and then we just continued from strength it became a lot easier especially around the Midlands because um, North people were looking for something different so getting artists was quite easy you'd think rave music who's into rave music mm. what producers you're thinking about it producers imagine you make a new tune now new style of music and then all of a sudden, oh, that's man doing that, that. All of a sudden, over a short period of time, producers were coming out of the woodwork, i.e. the bedroom thing, yeah, and then yeah, we yeah, moved yeah. to the flat, and then... I don't think that's a surprise. Yeah. I, I don't think it's a surprise. I think the same like the body popping and the yeah, breaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's yeah. going on, it's a part of like yeah. youth culture. Yeah. Youth culture doesn't yeah. have a, a, a postcode. Yeah, that's right. It's like, it it's was like, finding them. It was like, how do you find them? Because yeah. the connection... That, all right, finding them. Yeah, 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 finding yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. I know there was out there, but how do we mm. connect? So that's how we set up the business properly. We need to have a base so people can contact us. We've got to make everything look good so they want to be part of it. Mm. So when I was doing this thing, nobody showed me how to do this. Mm. We wasn't taught this. Everything was trial and error. Of course it was. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, Go yeah. press and plant. Oh, that. And the show does art. And then you do this, get mastering, and da 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 da. We had to. You know what I mean? Trial and error. So nothing was taught or showed. So all the mistakes that we made earlier on for years, because you see, most of the big labels now, they're university graduates. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, business yeah. grads. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or come from middle class money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they've been taught how to use. We weren't taught nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. There was, yeah, yeah. you know, there was no social kind of experience or thing to show is well you need to so there was, so there was a lot of trial and error yeah instead of that um learning curve yeah. being you know like that yeah. you know what i mean it's like this yeah yeah, yeah. you know like yeah. a long yeah. tail you oh, know 100 yeah yeah and yeah. then that the thing is we're getting ripped off with that situation it just made put fire and then linked up with simon we've done raves mm. and then the best thing that happened to us because i was in leicester we was the king of our castle Mm. Yeah, we dominated the whole thing, Leicester. It was our thing. Whatever's going out, thingy, that we weren't fussed about because we was dominating our thing mm -hmm. and was powerful. And it's a city. It's a city, it, it, and the promoters it, it, had to come into our shop to drop the flies. Yeah, and it's the a city. Packs. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter that it's yeah. Leicester. Yeah. Leicester is a city yeah. in the UK. Yeah. You could dominate a city. Yeah. That's like, yeah. it's like, it's powerful. You yeah, yeah. And, and you got to remember, we wasn't taught none of this. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah. like, yeah, we're going to plan. We had a plan. We had no mm. plan. Yeah. We was winging it. Mm. I yeah. think that's testament to also um, to the. Um, sort of like pioneers of those times, you know what I mean? You know, like like you said, how you did uh, Donington Park that first time, mm. and then um, which I didn't know that that mm. I thought the first people to do Donington Park was Amnesia House. That's what I mean. The yeah, same yeah. guy, our partner, then went to Amnesia House afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Because it was a bigger brand. Yeah, so I yeah. thought it was Amnesia House. No. And so if you think about that, yeah. they weren't businessmen. No. None of us yeah, were businessmen, yeah, yeah. and we became businessmen. That's right. And I think that that's testament to the work and and this learning curve that we speak about. About, you know yeah. that we were able to um, try a thing. Yeah. You know, and 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 even you, like as you told me that story there, the the tenacity and the mindset to go, oh, I've made this money, I'm going to reinvest it. Mm. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know, like you know, like that many, that many a man would have been like made that money. Yeah. Boy, I can, fl- yeah. I can floss now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and that was, mean? and that was testimony to my partner, my yeah. business partner Idris, because he had the little record shop. Okay. Yeah, he had the sneakers records there. So he said, yeah. "Yo, do you want to do this?" And I'm like, mm, "I'm not too sure." This day to day, I said, "You know what? Yeah." Because I'm thinking, yeah. I'm DJing, I'm yeah. traveling, doing this DJ thing, but I need stability in the day. Let's set up this thing. You mm. get me? I did. We had the studio and it's some thingy. And then when we started putting out records and we're doing mm. this big rave, to, to make it fit together, it was a natural progression. But we wasn't thinking to, to be that big. It was just like, we just need a little bass. But the place we got was massive. Mm. Two floors. Yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose it was um, then Idris then, really. Yeah, yeah Idris. Because Idris yeah. was just before you yeah. had a record shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd have been yeah, yeah, through yeah, yeah. Um, the... Yeah the risk element yeah, that's right. of doing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so in fact, it, it was easier for you to yeah, then be able to go, you know what, bro, yeah, yeah. I trust you. Yeah. You, you seem to be working out at your end. 100%, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. And his ethos as a person, mm. he weren't a party guy. Yeah. He was just business, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Family orientated, he was just mm. like, yo, yeah, you're the brains, I'm the man in the back mm, of the yeah, scene. Yeah. And it was a perfect combination. And my career wouldn't be nowhere without him because, like I said, he funded my records yeah. when I got laid off. You yeah, get me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Took me two years to pay, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but through yeah. DJing and got the gigs, he wanted to be out there. So it was like a natural pr- progression. So the whole, the whole shop ethos, we started that thing. I think, wow, what have we created? Mm. And then from there, we just took ideas. I went to New York, buy clothes. Yeah, you know, all them knock-offs yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Fly New York, yeah, come, boom, put them in the shop and London, you know, get clothes and then this next man starts coming, oh, I can do a merch for you. Mm. Really? Oh, yeah. Come, you just come in every month with a different thing. Oh, mm. check this bag, check this. And this is why before anybody was doing it type of thing, we had our own catalogue. Mm. This is what I'm trying to say, people. People do t-shirts, and we had that catalogue, mm. yeah? Mm. We was like, yo, because... We had low risk, not in a, we, we didn't have that risk because this man dealt with everything. Oh, this new thing, yeah, it'll work. We had the base. Yeah. We try it. Oh, yeah, try some. Yeah, we'll, we'll order 100 or whatever, order 50 or whatever, and it worked. So setting up that base was the most important thing. And I, what I was trying to say to people, people have record labels. We had a record company. Yes. That was the big thing here because we're thinking, how do the majors do it? Mm. Even on our small scale, we have to kind of replicate it, but we don't know. We weren't brought into the inside, so we didn't have the knowledge. Yes. So mistakes were made after mistakes and things we should have done. Um, and the artists in high sight and stuff. And like, for instance, Mark Morrison, his first record came. He came to us and was like, mm, OK, cool, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, who's this guy? Because he weren't from the ends. Yeah. I heard about him. I thought, yeah, 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 cool. Thingy, mastered the tune. Everything was all sorted. Going to finger. Brought the contract down. I said, here's a contract. Yeah, 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 it's going on. His first tune, Mark Morrison. Yeah. I don't sign no record. I don't sign no contracts. I said, I don't put out records. See you later. And just walked off. Right. Because I thought, who's this dude? Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. hold on a minute, we're going to invest the money and you don't want to commit to basic thingy. And then a year and a half later, boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And this was crazy. Mm. It showed me a lesson to think, Right, I know I did the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, because any issue, I always think if people are not pre- prepared to show some kind of basic commitment, you're going to have problems in the future. Later on down the line. Later on, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, always yeah, a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I had to learn that the hard way, even my own mistakes. Mm. Um, so going through a journey of putting up music and stuff like that, and who helped me in my career was Groove. Groove, my, my test, I just sent everything to Groove. Yeah. Yeah, he supported everything and like, because um, it was hard to break into the London thing. Yeah. When I kind of really recognised you was like your big jungle tunes. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I recognised that in real time. Mm. The playing at the other raves, I, rec- I recognised that retrospectively. Right, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's like saying like, right, so my mum was there like yeah. well before the, yeah, yeah. before those well, classic, way, way, way before those way, classic tracks. Way, way and it's interesting that. hearing you say now about the shop as well. Yeah. Because, because it is that, you know, like, you know, like when I think about some of the uh, brands, yeah, I think about V, mm. um, you know, there was a few yeah, record labels yeah. that, that almost simultaneously yeah. started. Yeah. Right. 
But that, even if it, they started in 1994, mm. it, while they were still kind of like doing the same, we were all doing the same yeah. as each other, which was sort of like, you know, finding our feet yeah. with it all. You seems to me that you in Leicester at that time were doing yeah. way beyond what oh, people yeah, were doing. The label was 1990 when I do the SOR. Yeah, but yeah. The actual kind of thing it was 91. Yeah. It was just an expression. Oh, I could put out music, mm. you know? Never thought this would be even possible. I remember the story from when I was a kid, looking at these black pieces of thing and thinking, wow, what is this? Mm. To be able to get my own one out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that journey, um, what I said from day one, the reason why my policy was to bring through fresh artists. Mm. Not try and sign anybody that signed or thing. My policy, because when we first did it, it was a struggle mm. in the sense where no one really wanted to help us. Mm. Yeah, no one was like, oh, no, you know what I mean? No one taught us, no, no one wanted to give us no advice mm. in a sense where, and the little advice thing was kind of common knowledge. Mm. So my thing is, I want to help people. Mm. I want to help from the grassroots, I want to help build so we can show the progression. They mm -hmm. can see, oh, they've came from here and we had the opportunity because we built a studio, I brought guys down. I remember going to a mastering place in 92. Guy was doing some work in the studio. It's mm. like, oh yeah, who's that? Builder, I said, yeah, oh, do you do studios? Yeah, yeah. And I took his detail, just thinking, oh, I might build a little bedroom. Yeah, yeah. Well, then when I got the opportunity, I brought him down. The guy came down two weeks with his crew, Yeah. slept in the studio, yeah. built the studio for me. Wicked. The measurement, I was like, wicked, you know what I mean? I mm. remember doing that thinking, wow, I'm in a position to give man them kind of words. It works, yeah, we yeah. bought a proper, built a proper facilities mm. upstairs where I was like, yo, purpose built to how I wanted it. Do mm. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was just like, wow, I'm in this environment now. I can work. Yeah. Because in them times, I had um, I had a phone in the studio, Idris's office and people in the office, I was in the studio. Mm. And I couldn't hear the phone, so they put flashing. They were on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get me? It was flashing. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, boom. Nah. And then I was, I was in a strict regime. I'm in there mm. religiously. Boom, 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 making tunes. Then I built another. I had a vocal booth, and then I had a little, like, little side room. Mm. And then I bought Mental Power right. from Sheffield. Mm. Yes, he was in that room. I was in, I was in the main room. He was in that. And then we had another two spaces, which weren't. We weren't thinking of studios, there was an office. Mm -hmm. They both was offices at first, you know what I mean? Then we brought down, um, so Mental Power was there first, who I brought in. Mm -hmm. It was the first artist I brought in house. He moved to Leicester, left Sheffield. Yeah. And then after that, probably the second artist that I probably brought in was probably Twisted. Mm. Yeah. He came, left London, met him at Music House. He moved to Leicester. You know, I don't think I, I, I don't think I met that guy one time. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Once. Grime. That's what I'm trying to say. I always give him respect because my man used to. Just, we had we had a shop. It's busy boy now. I tell you that. Yeah, He's been yeah. Busy man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Been busy. He's kind of yeah. like was gone for a minute yeah, and then yeah. it just come yeah, back. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, he makes tunes. It's always yeah, yeah. Tingy. Like I say, I always say to Lee, the biggest problem with Lee is yourself, Lee. Yeah, yeah. I said, you know, let, always let your music do the talking. Yeah, yeah. So we had the shop floor. Then we had the studios, and above that was storage. Because mm. because the ceilings are high, they put a, a thing, like a studded wall in it, and then we made that a storage. Mm. You used to sleep in the attic, bro. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You used to sleep, yeah, come down there, attic, we had a little bathroom shower, mm -hmm. and he was there, roughed, he roughed it out, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'd give him his props, he stayed Yeah, yeah, there. I got to give him his props for yeah. something like that yeah, as well. He yeah, he roughed it out, and yeah, he's, yeah. he'd think, he, then he bought Zen. Yeah. Yeah, I got mate, and I was like, oh yeah. So he came down. Then I bought Generation Dove for Newcastle, mm. but they got it a lot easier because Tanya's mum had a house she was renting out, so yeah. they got moved into a house. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It was like, and then all these three people had their own studios. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, it's a big operation. Yeah, yeah. And we had it working, and how they contributed one of the months series. They had to do one of the months for like I think it was a basic fee. That's their pay towards their room. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I said, well, it's not gonna cost you money. Yeah. But yeah. you gotta contribute. Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, well, yeah. give me this tune. 
Yeah, because they'd just bash out whatever. And it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like, mm. throw away, but not throw away. Yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But that's you how that series. Hand pick from, yes. You can handpick from what was there for that, one of another term. And that's away. how there was so much input, yeah? Because yeah. everyone had to contribute because we had the shop floors, mm. then we had the studios, then we went to the office next door. So we had a oper massive operation. When I look at it, mm. for a long time, we started that in 2000, we started that in 93. Mm. We left that in 2006. 2000, 2007. Yeah, so we was there a, a long a time. Long time yeah, very, exactly. very long time. And that day to day thing just done my head in after. Because that's when I built my own studio above my house. Mm. And I'm thinking, well, I've got a studio there, but I built my studio at home, converted my loft. I was comfortable in my space, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm thinking going into town, parking, and mm -hmm. you know, all that thing. I'm thinking, no. Nah. And then there's loads of things that happened when you're running a business. You couldn't trust the stuff. Mm, yeah, yeah. A lot of the stuff, tape packs was S O R. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That was the biggest downfall in the shop. P promoters are coming for their money, and we look at oh, so we're paying out this money, and thinking oh, well, where's all the money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's all the, it's either the stock or the money. Yeah, yeah. You get me? And just like stupid money, because them tapes were fifteen ninety nine each. Yeah. So then, so then, so then, that's where you know you're, so, you're just supposed to have the cameras. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but still, you got you still monitoring it. The, these men were you would put down the shop, and then man was going up in the stock room, mm. selling the stock. Right. So when we go down counting the stock in the shop, yeah. it's right yeah, yeah, to yeah. the till. But, there, but they're going around. up there and you yeah, get me? Yeah, yeah. I'm monitoring it. Yeah, yeah. And you got to remember these men were meeting promoters, yeah? I'm bringing in and putting in what's the name and it was just a big, and I'm just thinking to myself, yo, I'm done with all this kind of, all this day-to-day -day kind of like running it like that. It's just too much, you know, with the mm. shop and the retail of it. Um, and we made our own mistakes because we had to use Rob Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I remember leaving when we left that shop in 2007, having 20,000 records stock. Right, wow. Back That's stock. a lot, man. That's a lot of wastage. That's a lot, man. That's a lot of wastage. Mm -hmm. I had to put a lock up in the front of my house. Mm. You know, one of them lock up containers that was massive, it must have been 30 foot. Yeah. Yeah. Just Ramped for the records. Just for the records. And, and I'm looking at, you know, if your time's that, that's probably, mate. That's probably 100 grand. Of course it is, sat there. Yeah, sat yeah, there, yeah, wasted, yeah. you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking, well, we owe that person that, that person that, that person that, do you know what I mean? And that was probably one of the biggest, biggest learning curves because trusting in people mm. to run the business, mm. side of the business that I should have been taken care of. You know something, what comes to mind when I think of that? Mm. And we're going to move on, but yeah. what comes to mind when I think of that is that when you started this business, you didn't know what you were doing. No. Right? You yeah. started this business, you didn't know what you are doing, mm. and then you go and then you get to this point. Yeah. Now you've got to another point. Mm. You're still in the business, mm. but you're at another point now, which is, which is now, you, you, need to, you have to scale. Yeah. Right? I think that, and I'm not just, this is not a judgment on you by any means, you know what I mean? But it just it thought came to my mind that it's at that point where one, I suspect, would need to review again. Mm. How do I overcome these challenges yeah, so that I can continue? You 100%. Do you know what I mean? Because, because, because what ended up happening was going, like, if, if we spoke earlier about the things not being the same because of inaccessibility, yeah. if somebody had come to you now yeah. at that time yeah. and went, Leroy, here's this business in Leicester. Yeah. It's already running. Yeah. It's already got this, that, yeah. and the other. Yeah. Blah blah blah. I'm getting rid of it. Yeah. And 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 they said, right here you go. Yeah. You would have looked at it in a different mindset. One hundred percent. You would have looked at it different. Said, right. Oh, so you're teething out the thing up there, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's the, what's the problem? Yeah. Well, they're teething out the things upstairs. Yeah, yeah. I got tw twenty. I got yeah. hundred grand's worth of stock here. Yeah. This, that, and the other. Your mindset would have been different. One hundred percent. Because you would have been starting the business at that point. Yeah, yeah. And I just think that I just think that in many ways. Is there something to, it's just even for me to, to I, I like to do that when I hear, you know, like it's like the, the um, dragon's den, isn't yeah, it? You yeah. know what I mean? Somebody's got a business idea yeah. and then you kind of just look for it from a diff different perspective and, and, and come out with something that perhaps the person might not have thought of. But I take, I have to take responsibility because I'm the head of the shit. Yeah. So I let it happen in my watch and I made mistakes by doing certain things I shouldn't have done and, you get me? So it mm. kind of backfired, you know what I mean? Like, for instance, deal with Soul to Soul. We was offered a deal to do remixes, mm. and it was a swap thing. Somebody else is taking care of the project, and then we did the remixes for that project, and then 
the soul to soul field came where we're doing keep on moving and yeah. we had the thing here and it, it, it I think it blew up so good because I done we done made it proper seven mixes CD and then soul to soul come back I thought oh you know what that looks a bit big mm. we're gonna do it ourselves and I'm yeah. like okay. But at that time, we'd invested all our money. Yeah, of course. Pressed yeah. the promo CDs, mm -hmm. done all the promos, coming out here. And the deal he offered at the time, it was a decent amount of change. Yeah, yeah. But to me, it wasn't enough because it was not covering... The manufacturing. The manufacturing yeah, yeah. costs and all that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, mm -hmm. as a remix fee, it would have been great. Yeah, yeah. And I'd said, nah. Yeah. It's probably one of my biggest mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it would have gone out and you would have still, it would have yeah, just gone yeah, like that. It would have yeah, been yeah. trickling over. Trickling all over. But I was just stubbornness at that time, hype, music. You think, yeah, well, I can do that again. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was probably one of my biggest mistakes in doing deals, yeah? Because I said, well, it's their tune. They made it what it is. I'm just jumping on the back of it. Yeah. Who am I to tell them, man? They can't. And they got them beat to do the remix in the end. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Which was nowhere near as strong, no disrespect yeah, yeah. to the mixes we did, because people still ask it for the day. Yeah. And I wish I would have just done the deal. Like, mm. but no one, it's bored, aren't it? Nobody taught us business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're and just again, going you're on kind of like you're thinking mentality. of it at that time. Yeah, 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 we're just thinking of a mentality, you know what I mean? An ego, mm. you know what I mean? And I mean, mistakes. I mean, we're going down a different route story here, but it's, it's good for me to speak in with you yeah, because, yeah. because, I suppose that's one of the things that maybe we'll do a talk like that one of those days because yeah. we I never really had a conversation with anybody about their business. Yeah. Never yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spoke about it in here we yeah. speak about their life and yeah. whatever which involves their business. Yeah. But this where you're speaking with me now, it's I find it fascinating yeah. because because we probably all somewhere along the line came to a point where it was like made this mistake and yeah, didn't yeah. do this and could yeah. have done that and couldn't do this and then and then slowly while we're going up you know sod this or whatever yeah, yeah. somebody else is going like that going yeah. in front hospital because i remember and i hated it and when thing it and i'll get this promo and it was like hospital what's that and it was like yo da -da 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 -da. they had their own, their own little thing but them people coming from a different level, they yeah. looked at it as a business. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? They looked at it and we're, while we're looking at it, yeah, we're street. We're, we we run business like we're on the streets. We're selling our car back and forth, yeah, boots yeah. out. Even though we was professional on the on the time, it was how we, you got to remember, it's the, the seed that's been planted. Yeah? It's survival mode. This money's here. And we've got to do this mm. and we've got to do that with it. You know what I mean? Not invest that or change that or use that. We're just thinking, we've got to pull out records. It works. We've got to pull out records. Because the whole MP3 thing, well, I, well, I waited two years. And all these men want MP3s and podcasts and doing all that. I was like, nah, I'm sick on records. I'm staying on vinyl. Stayed in that, that, that thing too late. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that was the ultimate yeah. death of that situation. I think that's a really interesting thing about to have a talk about the business and the changes and how things changed and 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 I think there's well clearly there is you know what I mean even though many might say there are a number of gatekeepers and whatever yeah. this is this is an industry that no one really has a whole grip on do you get no, what I mean? One, you got to understand we created a genre of music yeah yeah, that's worldwide, international. Yeah, yeah, and that's and I, and I think that yeah. that there not only did we create a genre of music, you know, like that that anybody mm. starting right this moment now, yeah. even if they started right now, yeah. would say, you know what, I'm gonna make this music, or I'm gonna do this tune, or I'm gonna do whatever this that, and the other, and they get involved in it, and if ever they stop for a moment and said, I wonder where it started, yeah. Those they'll go just they just gotta have a look little look back yeah, and yeah. they'll see them go okay right, right. this is where the heritage yeah. came from One. garage yeah, grime yeah. always coming from the rave yeah, jungle yeah. scene they'll do that you yeah know what I mean? and, you and, go look at it because half them grime and garage man were failed drum, people trying to do drum no, bass jungle that's a fact yeah yeah this is fact yeah, yeah. yeah I will say though that that in in my experience anyway mm. um, that I can't speak for people from drill because I don't know anybody from that world. But certainly from the grime and the, and the garage world, they've all been completely respectful of, of yeah, that yeah, position. Yeah, that yeah. position. They've yeah. all been completely yeah. respectful. I've never yeah. heard a grime man yeah, or, yeah. A, or a garage man say, yeah, yeah. Um, Child, I'm so great and, and bonfire upon yeah, jungle. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah, once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always say, yeah, man, yeah, what? Yeah, I love my jungle. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I mean, yeah, what? Yeah, I remember yeah, when, yeah. I remember when, yeah. you know what I mean? And so, and so to that effect, you know what I mean? You know, respect to those guys for that. But, but yeah, just kind of like taking a few steps back, you know what I mean? We're going from that, actually, from where you were speaking about that soul to soul experience then, mm. do you know what I mean? And, and, and how that kind of like, 
kind of how you took that and, and how that went down. You know, that was just one of, for me anyway, one of many records that you had done. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because now we're fully in the throw of yeah. like DJ SS, the producer. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So walk me through kind of like your your mindset at a time when you were coming out with some of these classics, because they were coming out one after the other. Yeah. My thing with the, with the whole mentors, I had, because I was still classed as an outsider. I'm thinking, I'm making all these big tunes, but London weren't appreciating it. They're only, in that time, like, the kind of recognition. I didn't really get on a lot I of think, them I think, I think you, you, you were, yeah, okay, in yeah, that respect, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in recognition in terms of the tunes, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, you, but I, before, yeah. But I'm talking about before I started going bombs after bombs. Yeah, you don't yeah, remember. okay, before it, then, it, yeah. There was a picture being painted. Okay. My thing is, I'm going to hit them with these things, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, hold on a minute. These men are coming all the way to the Midlands, mm. yeah? Playing in Midlands everywhere. Then I'm trying to come in London. It's like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like... You know what I'm saying? It was like, for how big the tunes was, it was still a bit of, I don't know, animosity to maybe promote on a promoter side of things. The DJ was like, yeah, music, because we all like the food, music. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, if you get yeah, fed yeah, the food, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just talking about it, it was groove. Yeah. Yeah? I used to give groove. I used to set people up. Mm. I used to give it groove. Groove used to test it. Yeah, used to test the tune. It's like, bam, bam. I remember my main experience with groove, even I met him in the rave days, We've been tight ever since. I give Groove, when I come to London, he said, yeah, come down, man. He said, oh, you can stay at my house. And really, at that early time, I still, we were friends, but still kind of stranger. Man's inviting me around his yard. Mm. Yeah, stay here. Mm. You can house him barely. You get me a little flat. And he's like, yeah, you can stay here. This is you, mate. And I'm in there, look at Groove Rider Studio. And I'm like, raw. I'm thinking, this is big man. Mm. And man just took me under his wing. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's anytime you just call me, you all right? How's things? Blah, 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 blah. I made him, he's Jordan's godfather. Mm. My son's yeah, godfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, That's yeah, how respect. deep the relation yeah, to yeah. think it was groove. I just keep feeding groove. And he was like, yeah, this one, right? this work. And then when I gave him the light and stuff like that, I the original, I spent months on the A side, reverse vertical, doing all this thingy edits. And then I said, oh, I need to put a B side because it's two records, a record, A and B. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing with my guy. I played with one of my R&B man in the studio I worked with because we were doing R&B projects. And I played in the beat. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then he started. Da -na 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 -na, da -da -da -na -na. I said, what's that? Play that again. <laughs> Boop. Record. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. I said, yeah, I've got my B-side. I thought, yo, that's his little. A little B-side thing. Yeah, a little B-side thing. <laughs> so I sent Groove the big one. He said, yeah, it's a B-side. He was like, it's B side S. I said, what? He said, the piano thing. I said, no, 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 it's the other side. He said, no, I'm telling you. And from then it just went, Woo. Yeah. And then I just thought, okay, there's a combination of rave with the, I always had, because I came from reggae, and r and being soul. Mm. I always do, 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 do. Yeah. I always had them kind of, mm, yeah, when rhythm. I'm dancing, yeah, 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 I always yeah. had that kind of vibe. What can I do now? Dum, 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 dum. And I just had that thingy. And then black was a Christmas song. It was like, yo, how come everyone goes mad over Christmas for the music, Christmas number one? Mm. How can I do this in rave? And black, dun, 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 I put that in the tune. Mm -hmm. That's what it says, the bell, but I thought, nah, it's too cheesy. Yeah, so I just went, dun, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 and that's how black came. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, how can I think it? And I, I realized, there was always some message you had to connect people with. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm. the music today that we're doing, drum and bass, there's no message. It's just noise. Mm. Yeah. There's mm. no signature thing where you think that's why they, they ain't really know classics now. Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? I think, I think that's changing though. Yeah, it's changing now. Yeah, yeah, I think that's changing is. now. But well, for I mean, a period, yeah. Like an extended period. Yeah, very extended period. An extended period. period um, you couldn't go into a party and come out of the party and go, yeah, man, I want that record yeah, yeah, that goes yeah, like yeah, that. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Now, yeah, yeah. now it's getting closer. Yeah, it is definitely yeah, getting yeah, closer. Yeah, it's getting closer. And, I, I, there's, a, there's certainly a lot more balance. And, that's a, and that has actually happened in a very, that change has happened in the last even two years. Mm. If that, if that. And that over here for us of doing them tunes and being influenced by Groove and, he was my eyes and ears. Yeah, yeah, mm. and I, I was playing it and it worked. So he's like, yeah. So I just it in the Midlands, mm. yeah. This is busting out and it was just a matter of every dog has their day, mm, mm. yeah? And I was just on fire. So I just went boom, boom, boom. I had a vibe. I know it worked. So I was just bam, bam, bam. And I, just, and I was just so hard working and continue. Mm. I was at fire. But the problem is when business starts taking over creativity, 
then I've got all the, all the artists under me. They want support, they want this, they want that. So I'm, I'm starting to be the executive now. Mm, mm. And it started affecting my production thing yeah, because, yeah. oh, you know what I mean? Got, remember, these men have moved to Leicester. Very, very interesting. You understand story, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. They moved to Leicester. So it's like, oh, yeah, oh, mm. one man's got a problem with his girl. This man's doing this, this man's doing that. And I'm like, oh, the kind of thing here. And I'm thinking, yo, I just want to be the producer. But I thought, I've had, I, I've had that experience. Let somebody else have it. Yeah, because more people are thinking, then we can go and do tours. Mm -hmm. We're the first tour drum bass to go to America. Mm -hmm. 94 was the first Formation record tour. Mm -hmm. We went out there and done the tours in America. Do you know what I mean? When it was a bit ravey. Mm -hmm. And they were like, what's this music? I was like, mm, you know what I mean? This was before the lighter. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? We were doing the rave thing and I took out raps, mental power, ratty. You know what I mean? We all went out there and did this tour. And we were playing with Frankie Bones and it was just weird. It was like... And they couldn't, they couldn't fathom what was going on, but it was a British man that left the UK and went over there and started doing his own events. But he was doing the tape back thing. He was trying to do the tape backs over there because they never yeah. thing yet. So he thought, he wants to create his own tape backs. Yeah. Let me bring these guys over. We all stayed up his yard. Mm. Six men in this man's house. You get me? It was just like, wow, but it's America. We're like, yo. Mm. And then from there, when we got out there, we started to link with bigger promoters that started seeing it buzz and stuff like that. Mm. And then, that whole American thing, and then Winter Music Conference came. I was thinking, bro, okay, Miami, it's March. Mm. That sounds like a good idea. Me and my partner went out there for the first one. Wow, wicked out here, you know what mm. I mean? Mm. Drum bass, what's that? We said, this is 97, bro. 96, yeah, 97, drum bass, what's that? What, you know what I mean? And we're thinking, hold on a minute, what are you talking about? So the next year, we thought, we've got to do our own thing. We've got to let people know what drum and bass is. You've got to remember, there's been no really drum and bass party there properly, not on the scale. And everyone was going out to Miami because like, yo, it's winter. And the flights were dirt cheap. You could get out to Miami for 250 pounds mm. and stay cheap. And it was like, you go out there and you, bro, we'd all spend time for that week. Mm. This is where we spent time, you know, in clubs here in the UK. We're like, oh yeah, you're right, yeah, in the latest. But there, we was all together. You know what I'm saying? Fabio, we'll like this month. Yeah, we're well, sick, yeah, yo. Yeah, yeah. So we thought, yo, we need to do something here. We need to make our stamp here. It's an opportunity. So we rented a venue. They only give us midweek. And we got about 600 people for the first one. Whoa. So we thought, yo, next year. And then we made it one of the biggest parties there. Do you know what I'm saying? And that was a serious party. When I look at some of them lineups, it's just insane. But it made a pivotal standpoint in drum bass in the USA, and at that type part, things started swiddling out. You remember people, the media were saying, drum bass is a bit dead. Oh, you still doing that drum and bass thing? 98, mm. you know what I mean? And the optical edge rush changed the game with their thing, mm. yeah? Because the jungle thing started to thingy, because the course, garage yeah, started yeah, to blow. Yeah, 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 98, yeah, yeah. 97, you get know what I mean? So, so the media said, drum and bass is dead. We said, all right, okay. That's why we created World of Drum and Bass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Well, we done the World Drum and Bass concept was in Miami, but that's when we created, and I created this concept. I was like a bee in a bonnet. I'm thinking, we've got to show this. We made a, the album World of Drum Bass with people from all over the world. Done a directory, yeah, which took a year to complete. People in, doesn't matter where they was from, you know, mm. Afghanistan, that. We had them in the directory. You got to remember it was dial up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we had to get all this into, bro, it was so long. And we worked with a media <laughs> company to do it. So it was just a team of people. And I'm thinking about it. How could I do that now? Yeah, yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, how yeah. did I do it? But then I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we thought, yo, we made the packaging next level. No one's seen the packaging. They had a directory CD, triple CD, and we went. I mean, that would be, that would be, I mean, if you did that now, bro, I'd love to see that bro, something like that. Yeah, now. You did that now, yeah, bro. Yeah, that yeah, I, because yeah. even now, I'm even surprised when I hear certain tunes, I'm like, you mentioned Groove, you know what yeah. I mean? And I say to Groove, yeah, with that, boy, with that tune there, boy, wicked tune. Yeah, yeah. And he goes to me, that's a brother from Russia. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'd yeah. be like, yo, yeah, I'd be this like, is what I'm trying it's to just say. like everywhere now. Everywhere. It's, it's international. Like everywhere. Man. It's like international. And you, that, that's, and that's, <laughs> Starting from like these little rooms yeah. in, in England, in yeah. the UK. And this is what I'm trying to say. Drone Bass is not get nowhere near credit. I'm talking about Drone Bass should have its own mobos. Not just like... A part of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah it yeah. should be a governing body for Drone Bass. Mm. Sit down meal where it's proper warded, where mm. you're inviting the international artists. So it's like mm. televised, it's sponsored by Netflix or somebody like that. Because mm. we've made 
We've put in the work. Mm. It deserves that credit. It shouldn't be just an organisation like that's in drawn base, that doing their own wards with their thingy and giving it credibility. We're past that. That's mm. in my opinion. That's a good point. That's you know what I mean? It should be a governing body a of this point. music where it's like, it's recognised where majors are looking at this and thinking, wow, yeah? That's you know what I'm saying? Mm. We should be a MOBO, mm -hmm. yeah? It's, this is how big, because you've got to remember how many drone based parties in Prague are putting 25,000 people. Yeah? Mm. Belgium, 20,000 people. Mm. Yeah? This is how you got to look at it. It's not just a little side little club for 300 people. It's major numbers. Yeah. So them kind of numbers, how many people are listening to it? You go and look on the streaming. Yeah. How many people listen to this genre? Just a drone based tune at number one now. Yeah, yeah, sure. Chase yeah. Stays have three tracks in the top 25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just talking about drone bass. That drone bass is the biggest a bit ever been. That's fast forwarding from what's the name. So my whole ethos with World Drone Bass was like, yo, America's a big market that a lot of the other interests have never cracked. Yeah, yeah, it didn't crack. Yeah, we yeah. We couldn't true. crack yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, struggled to crack it. Mm. And we thought, okay. So we just grinded, 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 grinded. And, and I still don't think it's cracked. No, it's not cracked. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. It's cracked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. By definition yeah, of the yeah, word yeah, cracked. Yeah, yeah. But it ain't open. No, no. Do you know what I mean? No, it's not on radio. It's not yeah, doing yeah, the thing. It's not yeah, getting the data. Right, yeah. But trust me, in now, it's been notified because there's college kids and more and more and people. And that's what it will take, it yeah. will, which, is, which yeah. is exactly what's happened over here. Yeah. It's like, it's like um, you know, I, I'd say in the last, say, maybe five or six years, maybe maximum six years, mm -hmm. is where they're now the, the people from the younger generation, yeah. Yeah. if not for them, do you know what I mean? It's them that's kind of like now starting yeah. to spearhead the yeah. growth. Yeah. 100%. And, and by them spearheading this growth, you know, being at school, being at uni, oh, I want to be into drum and bass, then getting old enough to be able to go to the clubs. Yeah. And then, and then, but while they're in there, the music at that time is very, it's like jump up or whatever yeah, you want yeah, to call it. Yeah. But now they're learning to, they're learning that there's actually a broader yeah, spectrum. Right. And so, and so hence that will grow. If that happens in the US, yeah. no, it's game changer. That's it's game changer. all over. It's a game changer. It's all over. But the only problem with the whole US marketplace, it's, it's controlled by an older generation mm -hmm. that have responsibility, grandkids, grandfathers, you know what I mean? The younger generation, it's starting to come up a bit slowly, but what I found is there's always crews that have been solid, sat in stone, and they're controlling it. It's like a gang, it's like a gang mentality. Mm. They're controlling it, they're doing their thing, it's very kind of protective. So when a new, artists and new people come through, they try and get certain thing and they think, I can't get through. I'm going to do dubstep. I'm going to do trap. I'm going to do that. So you they don't follow That's, the route. They, they don't, don't go, don't go all follow the way. It. Yeah, because it's a lot easier. Mm, You're mm. then looking at, oh, I can get there quicker. But with drum and bass, which is the biggest stars, it's still the same yeah, yeah, people yeah. that yeah. have been well, doing not it really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, understand yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? I get you, so I get you. As a new kid, they're looking at it from, well, he's the biggest one in America, but he's been there since such and such. But look at, trap or grime or dubstep, this new kid, blah, 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 you know, he's just come from, and so it's opened up an avenue. Mm. That's mm. why drum and bass is so big, because they, they can relate to the new stars. Yeah. They're not looking at us, they're no, looking no, no, at this no, yeah, new yeah. generation. Oh, that's me. He yeah, looks yeah, yeah. like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Right. He dresses my like age. me. He's close to my age. He's close to my age. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. looks like me, he represents me. Yeah, yeah. I can see me on that stage, mm. so if he can do it, it's a possibility yeah, for me. Which is, I suppose, how it always goes. That's yeah, how yeah, it always yeah, goes. Yeah, That's yeah. how I think kind of um, blows up on that mm -hmm. scale. And then from the world of drum and bass, we started going to loads of different places in the world. And then we went to Russia. Mm -hmm. And R Russia is our biggest marketplace for our biggest events. Mm -hmm. We do that twice a year. Well, we was doing it twice a year. Mm -hmm. And that gave me bargaining power because all the major artists want to play it. Yeah. So when I'm speaking to them about doing this and doing that, they're all thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're thinking about Russia. They want to go to Thingy. I know not now, mm, yeah. but that's going to change. Yeah, I believe yeah. that can change. That's a different policy. That's yeah, a different another it, kind you know, of worms. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah, a yeah. kind of worms where, what's the name? But I, I've always look, looked at their family to me, people there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not looking at what people's personal beliefs because 90% to the 80% of the Russians are not into the war. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've been there and witnessed it where I thought to myself, not, I've not seen one flag, mm. not one person, no negativity about any other people. You know what I'm saying? Nothing like, and I've seen it firsthand, so I know, understand. That's why my thing is like, 
how is this affecting our music? Because there's music going back to slavery days, the blues mm. that got people through to the next day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They didn't worry about what the big man was doing over there. They was worried about what they need to do. And music was the sole healing of the whole situation. And I'm I'm a strong believer, and that's kind of how my last journey for the last 12 years I came to faith through an experience I went through. Mm. And it made me think, well, I'm blessed, I travel the world, but I still wasn't fulfilled. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. I was like traveling and going places and you know, this and that, earning money, but I was still looking, you know what I mean? And people think they're gonna find it in money and success is never gonna, it's never gonna satisfy it. It's never going to bring you peace. Because my, my thing, what I've learned over my whole experience of this journey, I've been blessed to be go and have this job 30 something years plus mm. and be my own boss. It's been a blessing from a kid that got basic grades in school. And I look at it, why? Why was I given this opportunity? Why have I lasted so long? Why that man who was bigger than me at that time is struggling now? You know what I mean? I ask, look at these questions. I go back and think, well, now I've kind of changed, changed my life around. I'm looking at things differently, but things are still popular. And I'm thinking, well, how can this be? Because I made an early decision. The whole reason I didn't, didn't do drugs, because when I my early 90s, I went into some rave and the man opened the door and I seen this guy, I thought he was dying, like, like you know what I mean? I thought, oh, what's up with him? Because I didn't know about ease, I didn't understand. Oh, I said, oh, don't worry, he's just tripping. I'm like, what's that mean? Yeah, he's talking here. I thought, that's never going to be me. No one's ever going to catch me looking like that. I made that decision then and there and I just stuck to it. You know what I mean? It wasn't about the ex taking it and, and feeling high. It was just seeing that person in that rave, mangled up and thinking, why would you want to put yourself to look like that? Do you know what I mean? That looks like he was dying to me. Yeah, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I, I, all through my thingy, like when I was a kid, the only reason I didn't become a hustler because we were on the front line with the guys, the older guys, and we're just kids. And we're just like hanging out. And some guy came from the countryside and he, five pound, I don't know how he got there. He must have walked, bro. It was only yeah, yeah, five yeah. pound. He come to about hash at the time. Yeah. I'm like, eh. so it's like, they gave the five pound, the guys give him a hash. The guys walked, like, walked away happy and I'm like, oh, this is not real. Mm. And he's turned back and I'm thinking to myself, what's he doing? Mm. He said, this is not, this is not thingy. They sold him licorice. Oh, no. yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This man's coming from clear the countryside yeah, yeah. and I'm there like a little kid just thinking, just give him his little thing. He's like, yeah, bring yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And his guy like, yeah. he said, oh, can I have my money back? No. And the guy slapped him, go away. And I could see this guy got such a hard slap. Yeah. He just stood there like that, ah, ate licorice and walked off. And I just thought, I can't be around these idiots. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I just yeah, thought yeah. to myself, if you're going to be that dodgy that you weren't even given the thing that he paid for, yeah. I can't be around it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So the whole mm -hmm. experience, when I look at it, it was just an experience I saw that just switched me off. Yeah. So I believe I have a, I won't say a calling, I believe I've, I have a testimony to tell that the most important thing in life is peace. Mm. Time is your number one thing. You cannot get that back, so don't waste it, and your health. Them two things should be your priorities mm. in life. And people think about wealth, their job, their this, their that, way before that. Because when you're on your deathbed and the doctor comes and says to you, what, what can I do for you? Can you give me a bit more time? Do you know what I'm saying? And people take this time for granted. So my thing is, do not waste your time. Do not, time is the most important commodity that we have. So fighting wars and fighting negative or negativi or negativity, is just a waste of people's time. Mm. I think it's, I think, I think, yeah, you're right with time. I think also though, it's what you do with that, that time. time. Yeah, exactly. Because you can have all the time in the world. world. Yeah. You can have all yeah. the health in the world. Yeah. Right, and sit there with all the health and all the time in the world. Yeah. But it's what you're gonna do with it. It's yeah. like if you if you're in a not in a position to fulfill some of the things that you'd like to do with that time and with that health, yeah. then 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 even that is just as bad. Yeah, but you, you know, you, but you still have time yeah. to adjust. Yeah, yeah, you still have you time to adjust. You, you, I mean, I'm glad yeah, you're yeah. speaking about this yeah. because, and and I'll tell you why because, and I know you paused a little bit to think about how yeah. you would yeah. how you would word that. Yeah, is because. You know, just speaking frankly, yeah. we, we don't know each other that well. Yeah. We've, we haven't, 
hung out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't even had a plate of food together. Yeah, yeah, for, uh, Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, in yeah. over 35 years. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so, but what I, what I did recognise um, only in the last few years is that, that, is that you've become, you, your faith has grown. Yeah. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, that, and that while, you know what I mean, I believe in, in, in things that we cannot s neither see nor touch maybe yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I know you've, you've, you've been quite open, yeah. do you know what I mean, about, about your faith and whatever. And, I, and, and I'm just curious as to, did that, was that always like that? No, no. And, or was no. it something that has happened quite recently? No, 10 years. Right. I tell you what, the break of a relationship, mm. Drawed me, drawed me to that because I was going into the situation of a relationship, and my sister just said to come to church. Mm. And when you're in the relationship and it, it's not working, you're walking around extra between each other, and you're just struggling mentally just to cope through a situation what should be a lot easier than it is. Mm. We make it more difficult. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We bring the problems because we become. I, when you you got to remember when you're traveling and and you've got this world experience, and everyone's saying, yes, you're, this tune, eh, eh. it's plant a seed in your head that you believe that you're better than you are. Mm. Do you know what I mean? No, and you no, get, I caught, up, you get caught up in the hype. Mm. And I was like that for uh, quite a long time. Mm. But even, I was trying to uh, uh, humble with it, but it still drew me in. Mm. And, I, and I think from them experiences, affected my family home life, 100%. So I look you back at it. won't be the first and you won't be the last, my yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I embrace it, but I, the whole thing was a blessing because it changed me the person I'm supposed to be. Mm. Yeah? And then my sister invited me to church. In fact, the year before, she gave me a Bible for Christmas mm. and she wrote on it, da, 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 and I'm like, oh, nice Bible, and I just put it to the side. Mm. So the seed was planted then. A year later, she invited me to church, came, and it just changed my life because the pastor said to me, it's not about religion, it's about relationship. And I went, I never heard that before. You get me? I was like, what? And it just made me think. Because I used to go to church as a kid, in that one ear, ground dog, out the other. And it was just, but I felt a sense of peace. I was an altar boy in church at school. And I only went there because my best friend was in thingy. He said, come, we can make some money for an altar boy thing. Yeah, because when they give the money to Tingy, we got the money. The little <laughs> pound as they put in it, they shared it between us. So it was like a little hustle. Mm. But I was in church there, it was like peace. I was just like, I didn't know what it was. I didn't go, what the understanding, I didn't get it. And it was that peace and that understanding helped me get through my career and make my choices that I made. Yeah. So when I came and I became saved, it got all revealed, like I was trying to say from the start. Mm -hmm. The picture was foretold and I've gone back. It's like watching a movie mm -hmm. and seeing you alive. Everything I seen, I said, wow. It made something and it blew my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking to myself, wow. And I came, I got saved. My daughter was with me at the same time. She came and it was my, mine and her thing. You know what I mean? It was mine and her thing, mine and her thing. And we did that. We both went through the journey and we've been blessed, 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 blessed. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, I've had a good life. Mm. Why am I still in this game? And I think God's got a purpose for me to be able to shine a light in a situation. Mm. That's why I do what I do. Mm. It's my calling. I understand that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to preach, I'm here to teach. Because mm. a lot of people I speak to, I do a gospel and bass radio show, no, local station, right, okay. every, every Sunday, right. they want me to do drum and bass. I'm like, I'm not doing a drum and bass show. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, but if I play music a weekend anyway, why am I going to come and do it on the radio just yeah, to say yeah. complain it? Mm. Gospel is a message that people need to be heard mm. in a positive, especially in this mindset, yeah, in, in this day and age, because everything's all about negativity. Mm. How I'm trying to do it is I'm a, trying to be a bridge. Yeah, my job, I can reach people that the church can't reach because mm -hmm. of where I am at, do you know what I mean? And who I speak to and where I go. So my thing is just to give them another chance, another choice to have, you know, you're going through something. Doctors said, you've got to do this. You've got to take this medication, you've got to do that. I'm saying, no, you come here and you can get natural medication, mm. which is the mind, getting your mind correct and find yourself at peace and understanding that trauma that you went through, mm. understanding why you're going through this because you're not at peace in your spirit. Yeah, because you look at, um, the, 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 there's a 50% rate of students that go to uni are in depression. Yeah, this is told because we've got people at a church that work in the student thing is, 50% of the students that go to uni 
suffer with depression, yeah? And they've just left home, mm. yeah? So you got, remember, they're coming out in the real world and having to fight for themselves because school is not t teaching them what to do. School is just teaching them mathematics and basics mm. and to be a worker. It's not teaching them how to live life, mm. yeah? So people are coming out not ready for life and life is tougher as we know, yeah? We understand, you know, this next generation, I fear for it personally, this kid's grown up in this next generation. You remember when you was a kid, you could just, mum said, what time? Be back by 10. They didn't ask you where you're going. Mm, just yeah, make yeah, sure yeah. you're back in the house by 10. Mm. One last minute past 10, you get licks. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You know what I mean? Now you're like, oh, mobile phone, it's out, it's out. Is that, where is he? Calling the phone and, you know mm, what I mean? Yeah, you're yeah. that paranoid mm. for your kids. No, yeah? no, you're right, you're absolutely you mean? right. Yeah. You're paranoid, yeah. you're, with that paranoid for your kids, and you got to think about your kids' kids. And mm. So I'm looking at it from a generation thing. So through my music, anything, any chance I get to spread a positive message, I'm spreading it. Mm. There's Be nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? That's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, I asked that because um, mm. cause I, I, I don't know where I came across it, but I believe it was from the... Um, the music house and group that we're yeah, all a part yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, and there was something you wrote in there one time. Yeah. It was only like God bless or yeah, something yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't anything preachy yeah, or nothing yeah, like that. Yeah. But I thought, I recognised it immediately. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. And, and, and he was very open about it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, so, and so I'm glad you were open yeah. enough to speak about it here oh, as well. Thing, hey, but you got to think about it. You look at it, you're in a loving family. Yeah. Yeah. You got shot over the rooftop that you're in love. Mm, yeah, you're yeah, blessed, you've got yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. You get me? Yeah. And people hide that. Mm. People, yo, well, I've got kids. Yeah, oh, yes, my. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's why you have to, that's why everybody's in a negative mindset because everyone's isolating themselves. Mm. Yeah? And my, my thing is now, I speak to so many people just having conversations, you know, even speaking to women on a conversational thing. When I'm thinking, to, the story's always the same. And come to a realization what it was. Because I, I went to church, even in the midst of the madness, like I explained to you, I went to church because my best friend at the time was an altar boy. He said, come church. And his parents were really strict, yeah? So the only time we could hang out was at church, a bit at school, it wasn't loud at, 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 after school. Mm. So we just used to hang, you know what I mean? And then they started be rebelling, but they became, we was all altar boys. Mm. And we did, it was like, oh, the money they put in, Church wasn't busy. They just shared it between us. It was pocket sweet money. Mm. But I remember being in church and a sensation of, I didn't know what it was, just calmness. You know, and I think I'm 14, 15. Oh no, I must have been younger. Four, yeah, 13 each time. You know what I mean? Where everything's around me is still mad and people are doing, this is the start of the craziness. I'm just getting this sense of peace. And I got ordained. I mean, I remember the Archbishop of what's the name came down and confirmed me and it was a big thing in the paper. And I'm like, oh, what's the big deal? <laughs> but all I met was going there and I was the only one going to the church at my family. Church, family was at the church every now and then, the black church. Yeah. I'm there at the Catholic church yeah, on yeah. my own, mm -hmm. old building. And it was just like a sense of peace and well-being. That's what I felt. I'm thinking, yo, but I know God was working me from back then, but I didn't understand what it was. Mm. And I made good friends from, from break dancing. We used to use a church hall, like all the story, that church hall, that church hall, because I was connected. And then going back to the times coming through an experience of life, life changing experience where I think, what's the hope? I'm traveling, I'm doing this, I'm earning this money and I'm still, in torment, fighting with myself, why me, da, 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 da. And I look, I know why me, because of the dumb mistakes that I made and me not embracing what I'm supposed to be doing. And as soon as I, I, I got given a chance and, it, and, it, and it's like, it, like it opened up to me, do you know what I mean? And I remember that um, one of the leads in church said, oh yeah, yeah, do you want to be? I said, yeah, but I'm a DJ. I don't, I don't know if I can commit because I'm, and, you know, making excuses still. And I just went, you know what, I'm just going to roll with it. And the more deeper I got, I got deeper and deeper, just learning, you know, changing my mind, changing perspectives, learning something new. That's what it was. I found the sense of peace. You know what I mean? I overcome the trauma, the traumatic thing of a massive breakup and, life and then want my kids 
oh, my kids are not right, and you know, all that, you know, all that negative stuff. It just became easy. Every time it came easier and easier. So I just stopped taking it on. I just stopped taking it on. And then I just stopped expressing myself, learning more, going in more, to a part where the church brought me into leadership. I'm thinking, well, they blessed me going, oh, just come back safe. Because what people got to understand is, whatever situation thing is, it's like, just say, look at it, you're in a relationship. At least you're coming home every night. You're safe. It's just like the church say to me, well, you're here on Sundays, you're represented, you're helping out. So what you're doing there, we know that you're going about it the kind of way because it's bringing you back to your home. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So my boss is like, yeah, I want to bring you in the leadership. I think, what, me? I'm like, it's a big thing. You get me? I said, yeah, mm -hmm. no, we can see. You're going to reach people. You're going to do this and da, 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 da. And I'm thinking, that's a big responsibility. And I had to humble myself. I'm on set up team. My man said, yeah, put that wire in. Do that, 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 that. And, Bush, and I'm like, yeah, I'm embracing it because I've had to humble myself, yeah? I've had to show humility, you know what I mean? And, and understanding, because I've got to be able to do that to be able to show it to somebody else. You've got to understand it. You've got to go through it. So my whole journey and my whole experience over the last 12 years has been a changing and things just got blessed. My, my career, work life is as busy as it's ever been. Shows, do you know what I'm saying? And, and I've kind of, gone the other way in a sense where I'm not chasing that. You know, I'm not doing that, I'm doing, you know what I mean? But it's things, I've been blessed and blessed and blessed to a point where I'm thinking, wow, God wants me here. He wants me here. I've got a mission. And in, in this period, I've met up with loads of DJs. We've got a group, DJ Unity, where DJs and producers and singers and all in this group that was into drugs, that were doing hard stuff, but they got saved and, but they still love the music. And you look at it and there's a, like a, a, new, a new thing being created where, you know what? The old church theory is that you can't do this, you can't do that. You can't go tonight because you can't, you can't, you know, you, 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 you this and that is kind of missed. You know, because the Bible don't say don't drink. It says don't get drunk because you're not in control. Because mm. it's all about being in control of yourself and being responsible. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? I had to learn that. The people say yeah, the love of money. It's not it's the, the money is the root of all evil. It's not. It's the love of money is the root of all evil. I just learn your stuff like that. And now when I'm speaking to people in general situations, I can speak to them and give them advice, sound advice that helps them. So what I've done before with my music and people being blessed with it is, is not even a fraction of what I'm about to do. Mm. Do you understand what yeah. I'm saying? And and that is making me. You go to another level, another level, even with music. I mean, gospel, drum and bass things we're doing. I've set up a new label. Um, and now things are changing. I'm speaking, like I've done this radio show and I'm just speaking. I speak to people on levels, play music and, and I stop and speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I see people in clubs and thinking, oh, you know that little thingy sending the thingy? That spoke to me. You know what I mean? Not that tune you play, mm. that little message, I'm going through this, oh, you know what, da, 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 da. So that might be the only positive the message they might hear that this year. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So I've got responsibility, you know what I mean? I'm taking it serious, not to be on a preachy thing, but yo, if I can help some, it's my whole ethos with the whole music thing, you know what I mean? But I got jaded and twisted and made stupid mistakes and became selfish and righteous about it. And all the mistakes I made, I've got made up because I still have the same friends. Even though my, I fell out of a period, we're still friends now because they look at what was really done, mm. yeah? And you've got to take responsibility of your, your actions, your mistakes that you made. And leading up to, like you say, the present time, it's been a blessing, mm. you know what I mean? It's been, my work has been busier than ever. I'm my own agent. Yeah. I don't have an agent, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm thinking, it's too much for me, mm. but I'm thinking, passing control to somebody else that might not take me where I want to go. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. So I'm, I'm directing my own path mm. because I'm trying to bless people in a way to think, yo, I, the artists I sign that with me, I don't sign the music, I sign the person. Mm. Yeah, the music's secondary. Yeah, the music opens a door in a conversation, but it's the person. Is this person nice? Mm. This person deserve the chance. This person willing to work. So my whole ethos and mindset is change. And the, that's a philosophy that we all should take on instead of looking at it from a financial game point. Because 
When you do something good, the rewards always come. You work hard, you play hard. It always, you know what I mean? They're the benefits from it. It's basics. And like I said, the picture was foretold to me. Everything I thought I knew and I seen, I think, wow, 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 wow. So it, it's very, I hold nothing back when I'm trying to express myself. I, I didn't pass the message I'm thinking, I'm sharing on my stories before I'm sharing my tune. Yeah. Because I want people to see my feed as a positive kind of message. And if, even when I'm angry or stressed, I'm not going to post no negativity. Because mm. there's too much negativity in, in, in the world that we live in. We're all going through financial struggles. We're all in the same boat. Do you know what I'm saying? It's how this walk has taught me, we're always going to have problems. There's always going to be a situation. It's told me what you do to handle it. You get me? Yeah, yeah. The foresight of thinking, I brought you through the darkness before, I can do it again. Yeah. So don't worry about that. Do not fear. Do you know what I'm saying? Just go by a positive faith attitude, a mental thing, and things are just being blessed now. Mm. You know what I mean? You know, Leroy, with all the people who I've spoken to, and it's not even in this podcast, I just think, I just think in, the, in all of the years mm. of me being in the scene, I've never spoken to anybody who has managed to balance out yeah, the said. way how you've just, yeah, you've just explained that to me. Uh, the balance is like... Yeah. It's either, it's either gone like that, you know what, I've become, yeah. uh, for want of another term, yeah. religious yeah. or in the faith or yeah. whatever, yeah. whichever way you want to call it, yeah. and so I'll see you later. Yeah. Yeah. Or, oh, I'm battling with yeah. these two things. Yeah. But I've never spoken to anybody who has, who has seemed so balanced uh, and and understanding of what they're going through and i think that if there are people out there watching this to this point in this podcast for them to if this I, I, mean, I was about to say about the group yeah you know whether there were other yeah, people yeah, like you loads mate yeah. and so and yeah. so to hear that i think um you know like it's it's a dimension that I've never I've not really considered Probably. I mean there is somebody actually I can I can it'll be fine for me to mention his name his name's Carl Tough Enough Brown yeah yeah and Carl that's right he's Carl cool. you know he went into the faith yeah. and whatever and he's become a pastor now yeah, yeah that's right yeah. I mean, but he doesn't as far as I know yeah. I don't think he does anything more to do with the yeah. scene anymore yeah yeah and so that example is the example which is the norm it, it, almost like the normal paradigm yeah you know, yeah. somebody who's come to the faith and then said, listen, man, it was great while it lasted. I'll see you later. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But you seem to be harnessing. Because um, there's, there's two reasons. We live in the devil's playground. Yeah. The devil's using our wants, our needs, and our fame and our fortune. So God has just taken it back. Saying, okay, you want to do it that way. I'm doing this way. Because I've not been, um, I've not been, what's the word? I've not been captivated by the whole drug thing, me being a venue in a club, it's not fit to me. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not gonna get drawn in drug and, you know, and try and mess people's life up. So I think that's one reason why I've still been blessed in the circumstances. Cause I'm, I'm in a lot of venues, I'm thinking, what am I doing here? Mm. Even though I love the music, I love seeing the thing, I'm just in my heart of hearts, I'm thinking, what am I doing here? Mm. Just a load of drug people just, you know, wasting their time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? In, in, in the grand scheme of things, but that's people's choices to make, but a lot of people don't have a choice. Even though we do have a choice, the circumstances don't allow them that choice. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? They think, because they're mates and they're friends, you think about it, you, um, look at it from this perspective, that man has created this animal of baby fathers. So it's a generation of baby fathers and women bringing up the kids and having to be the mother, the father, the teacher, the thingy. So why do you think, how do you think that that kid, as a boy, grows up? He's not being taught by a father figure. So when he goes out on road and sees some boy, he's going to learn, never take for that, because we all need the understanding of mother and fatherhood, yeah? We all need that placement so we've created, we've created a generation of women now that are flipping it. They're like, well, you, yeah, only fans. They're like, we're the bosses now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because a man have not done what they're supposed to do in the first place. Yeah, it's all boiled down to the, 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 the selfishness of what a man's been, you know what I mean? Family unit, it was from the beginning of time. No matter how people try and change it or water it, dilute it, that is the growth 
a basic human being. People are trying to change it by changes this or saying that. I'm not going too deep into that. But when you look, just look at it from a basic standpoint, yeah? Look at our world 25 years ago to what it is now, yeah? Divorce rate is 55%. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just, just basics, you know what I mean? 55%. Oh, I don't, I don't like you no more. You, 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 sometimes you don't like each other, yeah? There's going to be periods in, in a relationship, that's what's going to happen. But the love will oversee it because you battle together. Yeah, you come to a common ground, I come into a couple of understanding. People are just like, no, nah, I don't like it, I'm gone. See you later. They don't want to fight. They don't want to battle. Everyone wants it easy. You've got the mobile phone. It's like everything's disposable, just like with our music. I think that this is an expression yeah. of, of growth in you yeah, um, as a man over the years, mm. a man who's gone through this scene actually from a, quite a different perspective to a lot of other people who I know because you, I, I think that, that living, um, living and being brought up and do, taking care of your business inside the Midlands has given you a different perspective to many of uh, other Londoners, you yeah. know what I mean? Mm. And, and, and many other things that, I mean, there's so many nuances to each of us mm. that will make our lives very different. Mm. As you sit here now and everything you've told me now, do you know what I mean? As we're coming to the end of the conversation, you know what I mean? You know, like, it, it, it makes me think, therefore, especially at the fact that you said earlier how, how um, you just, what you've done so far is just a fraction. Mm. What's coming from DJ SS? As a kid making music, my old idea was never to have a career, it was just to express myself. Mm. And I've been blessed to be able to do that. So I never took it like, oh, yeah, I've done big things. People say, oh, my God, that's you, da, 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 da. I'm like, yeah, it's nice to get appraisal, but it's just a tune. It's just the music I made. I made people happy for a moment. My calling is to change lives. And not from a pastoral side of thing, to be able to speak to them on a level what makes sense. Yeah, just a general conversation. And it's... And it, every time I get into a conversation, a situation, someone says, you know what, that thing you said on the radio, or that thing, oh, it resonated with me for that time. I just tuned in, it was there, and da 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 blah da blah, blah, blah And I've said, sometimes we get messages and we get signs and we ignore them, even though we're told not to be with that person or not go there or not to do this. We get told and we've got that devil on our shoulder and you know what I mean? And we ignore the signs because we're a victim of our own circumstances. That is the ultimate saying yeah we all have a choice sometimes we struggle with the choices you know what I mean but we all have a choice at the end of the day um, so I want to be able to communicate with people on a level that makes sense like my good friend is a DJ he used to work with me on the promotional side of thing rave guy Bubba he lives in the next county next to me Market Arbor Posh area, you go there, you think, wow, nice. Drug ridden, county lines, yeah, because the kids over there ain't got nothing to do. And you didn't, and it's an undercard. You think, wow, this is a beautiful little area, but they're just stuck in the middle of nowhere. And it's like, thing and I'm coming from my radio station one Sunday, tired, thinking, oh, and he's walking out another building. Where are you coming from? Oh, I'm coming from CCC. I'm like, what's up, cocaine anonymous? I said, oh, yeah, I said, I've been praying and da 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 da. I said, I'm just doing a gospel radio, come to church. Oh yeah, I might do. Just like positive and not thinking nothing. Saturday night, call me. Yeah, 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 where's this church? Six months ago, this is a guy that's a drug problem most of his adult life. Mm. Yeah, proper, you know what I mean? Got baptised mm. last Sunday. Been mm. coming six months. He bought loads of people and he's come to understanding now he's going into, he's got a job in a drug whatever association speaking to people that are just like him yeah do you understand what i'm saying yeah, yeah, and this yeah. is one person that's completely left-sided this ain't a man that's had experience of church nothing to do with it so i'm thinking yo imagine if i didn't go to that radio session that time yeah i was going to say that essentially is what you're saying is yes. that is that is, is by changing lives when you speak about changing lives mm. you speak about it almost in the in a way of how um should become quite 
are common in, in, in the circles that I'm going in um, where people are changing lives in, in other ways, but yeah. not necessarily in a spiritual yeah. way. But yeah. there is an under, yeah. undertone of yeah. that, yeah. if you want, yeah. for want yeah. of another term. Yeah. But it's around the support and the, and the, and often it is a bit of either mental health yeah. or, or drug related yeah. or yeah. what have you. And um, via charities, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. These people trying to change lives in ways that like that. So, mm. so I suppose, to me, that is something really quite precious. I'd imagine for you, you know, to be able to do. One hundred percent. It's it's a calling now. Mm. I understand it. Sometimes I try and fight because I've oh, got to go. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I set up this gospel bass label two, three years ago. I was putting out music regular. I ain't put enough thing for two years, and I'm thinking, yo, if I can do the drum and bass, I can do that in my sleep. Do you know what I mean? So it's just a matter of perspective. And it's not preachy, mm. it's teaching, learning, understanding. Because at the end of the day, if, if I can get it through you, mm. I can get it to you. Yeah. That's a blessing from God. If you want blessings, you've got to share that blessing. If it mm. stops with you, then I'm just going to give you a little bit of it. Mm. Because there's so many people struggling in the world. And I, like I said, I don't want to be preaching. I'm just looking at it from a simplistic, biblical, 101, it's simple. You know, you've got to look at what's going on around us. The whole world is getting darker. We don't want to think about it, but it's getting darker. Remember when you hear somebody dying, maybe once every couple of years, now every week you hear somebody's died. You know what I mean? It's like in the news, oh, it's this man died, or oh, that person, and you're like, oh, yeah. And it was never that. You know what I'm saying? It was never that. We're normalising it. We're normalising you know, terrible things in life. You know what I'm saying? And it's getting to a point where society as a whole, what's happened to us as a whole with this energy crisis and the rest of this is utter madness. Mm. Two years of COVID, a war, and then we're in another war, battle, a financial war, to be able to survive in a generation. Mm. And it's, it's not normal, mm. you know what I mean? Um, but how do you get through it? Do you know what I mean? Because a lot of people are struggling, mm. but you got to have a mental strong standpoint, be able to connect in a way, thinking your grandpas, your great grandpas went through World War Two, World War One. Da 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 da. They survived. Mm. The Great Fire London burnt down. It's still thriving. Do you understand mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, any last words, Lee? Any last words? I want to say big up to everybody that's supporting me. Big up to my friends and my family. Big shout out to Tanya, UMC for paying a big part in the career. Love to my kids, love to my church, Harvest City. That gives me spiritual guidance. And um, I want to say thanks to all the fans. I'll be in a show near you. I watch out for the new thing I'm trying to set up. We've got Base Disciples, the gospel thing, and I'm doing a thing called DMB for Life. That is the next thing I'm trying to do. Like. I've designed a logo, got everything in place, but I want to make it accountable because I, I want to make a charity, but I don't want it to be, I want it to be more than a charity. I don't want it to be going through hoops to get basics. I want it to be a thing where we do d and for life, one in England. So it's like a massive event where everybody comes together and it's funded and it gets thinking and there's a pot of money to be able to make a difference, to do something. Because like when COVID happened and people struggle mentally, where could we go? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Because I've spoke to people in America. We can go and do it in America, do Australia. You know, it's an event where it's based on, we go on a tour, do 10 dates, one date will be DMB for life as a charity. Mm. It's donated to a cause of whatever people controlling that thing, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it means a, a load of minds coming together with an understanding that it's a positive thing. It's not just a charity for the charity's sake. It's, a, it's something that we should, have a, we should have a governing body of drum and bass, yeah. not a dictatorship. There should be something in place to make this thing because the narrative is changing constantly, you know what I mean? If your face don't fit, blah, 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 it's not about music, it's not about talent anymore. It's a different perspective. But still in the backbone of it, foundation is foundations. Mm. But if you don't repair the roof or fix the windows, you know what I mean, paint the doors, foundation will be there, but they just stay as foundation. Mm. And that's what, what we've got to think about is as the older generation, yeah. we still got to maintain. 
and how can we educate the next generation coming through? Because this is our thing. Mm. Yeah. Even though we pass on the torch, but if the torch bear if torch carriers take the flame and do something stupid with it, all the work that's been put into the thingy will be heritage. But drone base has lasted so long because we as the artists have controlled the narrative. It's not being backed by majors. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not the industry's been made from kids in the bedrooms, the underground. And now I've just done a deal with Sony. Um, Trace has dated, brought me in, the artist, and then she sang on basically, it's like a lighter, and she's done a vocal for it. They're playing it all over the radio now, and I got brought in into the conversation. So I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, let's see what can happen. Yeah. And it's another blessing, it just happened out the blue. Yeah. But I, like I'm saying is, there's a bigger picture in play for me now. There's a bigger picture and I'm gonna be reaching out to people in a way to try and make it sense. And the whole thing, I've set up DMB for life in lockdown, but everything has to be put in place. Cause I don't wanna be in a manager and director. I'm not looking at it like that. I'm, I need a body, I want a body of people to come together and think, Here's the ideas, we should do this, you know, this and that, you know, people with experience in charities, you know, fundraising, mm. getting funding, what can we do with it? Yeah. How can we make a difference? Because this, this drum and bass music that we love, that we created is a phenomenal beast, but it's just, it's sitting dormant. It's, even though it's big, it's dormant in a state where the credit that it deserves, mm. it doesn't get the credit where it deserves. Well, on that note, Lee, yes. you know what I mean? I mean, I really appreciate you coming down and joining <laughs> nice. us, man. Do you know what nice. I mean? It's, yeah. been, it's been very, it's been, as we come, as, particularly as we've come to the end of this conversation, yeah. it's been very refreshing to hear yeah. a, a different perspective of like a DJ, yeah. um, entrepreneur, um, husband, father, yeah. and your life and how that's been and how that's moving forward. Yeah. So I appreciate you, you doing that for us, bro. You know what I mean? Bless, 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 right, yes. bless up, my yeah, brother. Man. Thanks Big for having for me. That, yeah? Yes, man. Right. Bless, bro. Thanks. Bless, Thanks. bless, Thanks. bless, Thanks. bless, Thanks. bless. Thanks. bless. Thanks.